Welcome back, friends, to Occultus Anonymous. Uh, Into the West, the Mage Awakening Chronicle, set in 1846, Colorado. I keep wanting to say 1946. That's the oh, one that can... we do when we go punch Nazis. We're gonna go there. Uh, I mean, it's it's possible. <laughs> I don't think we have plans for it. We got we got shit to do here. Uh, I mean, we'll have time travel. <laughs> that's true. Um. Oh yeah, it's happening. Hmm. We're going somewhere. Jumping forward in time. Though. Okay, anyways. Um, as always, as always uh, we are sponsored by uh, Roll20, uh, hosted by the Onyx Path, and supported by all you lovely folks. If you're watching, subbed, not subbed, uh, or following, or yeah, all the different things that you can do. Thank you for your support, and a very special uh, thank you to our patrons who support us monetarily. Thank you to Adele, Al, Alan, Michael, Alexander, Ang Falleth, Bernie, Blood Angel, Brandon, Chris, Daniel, Doc the Doom, Delore, Emil, Funzusu, Rali, George, Jack, Jenny, John, Josh, Julian, Camo, New Chronicle Hype. He hasn't changed it. Judging you. Cat Feathers, Crazy Band 1772, Melissa, Michael, Milo V3, Moku, Neo Megus, Nova, Parker, Perry, Puppeteer, Riafio, Ryan, Shaksara, Sina, Terran, The Arcane, The Sacrificed, Thomas, Thomas Toast, still my favorite trio, um, Usuf Sama, Vortex, uh, Woodfoot, and Zoltan. Thank you all very much for your support. It means a lot to us. Uh, new mic, who this? No, same mic. Different location. Um, I moved it. You will notice this is no longer floating here, just off screen or anything. It's actually up here. We'll see if I manage to punch it. Just uh, off screen. Just That's off cool. screen. Yeah, if I, if I punch it and everybody gets a thump in the ear, I apologize. Um, so um, for everybody else, um, uh, by everybody else, I mean the players, uh, we're going to start with a quick Q&A round, by which I mean there's only one Q. What is every character's favorite color? And if you have a Y, throw it at me. No volunteers? Cool. Ash, what's Gisela's <laughs> favorite color? Um, see, hard time thinking of like that. I know that I liked the idea of dressing her in the light blue, mm -hmm. just because it's I don't know. It's a um, kind of very like, like Virgin Mary connotations, like nice, pretty. Um, not saintly, but like, sure, she is the model of a perfect young lady. Right. Sure. And so that is. Yeah. Well, and hey, back in 1840 ish, um, blue was the girl color. Mm -hmm. Baby boys were put in pink because it was light red. Like red, but softer for babies. Mm -hmm. uh, let's jump up to Craig. What's Theodosia's favorite color? Um, I think a like a dark blue. Cool. Not, not, not like a navy blue, but somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I guess we'll keep going around to Ralph and Ungun Cloak. Mm, Cloak's favorite color is the color of hope. And what color is that? Actual hue. Um, <laughs> his favorite color is brown. He likes various shades of brown. It's partial to the reddish brown hue of the tunic. You can see in the drawing that Brenna made so masterfully. Uh, Cloak is fond of brown because it is a very present and permanent color on the earth. It's the color of so many people. It's the color of eyes. It's the color of wood. It's the color of blood after it has faded. It's got a very dried. connection thing going there. Like a mm -hmm. Mastigos or something. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what about Chris? Uh, what, what's Isabel's favorite color? And if you say purple, I'm coming through. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you said it and I was like, okay, don't say purple. Don't yeah. say purple. Don't say purple. <laughs> um, I think it's. The various colors and red tones of sunset. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. So it's got some yellows and some oranges in there, but basically it's just, you it's know, a, it's a very that sort of, of aesthetic, right? Um, it's it's a it's a thing of impermanence and. The, the natural order and the the beauty of nature. Sure. 
Also, for those of you at home wondering why the heck is Drew asking them their favorite color? Do you see just how much thought goes into picking a favorite color? Do that when you make your own characters or your players are making picking characters. It it jumps start all sorts of other. Hmm, they do have opinions besides these stats and these dots and stuff like that. It's, it's really interesting. Um, so we'll probably see more of those as we continue on. I did also take three dots in Sunset Loving, so. <laughs> it is specialty and is as your yeah. expertise, yeah. Um, so uh, a more uh, important question is, and uh, for anybody who watched the Rookery uh, Chronicle, we went over this before. So what do we think about players rolling dice against one another, specifically using the doors mechanism? Um, I think after the last Chronicle, we kind of knew each other a little bit too too poorly before we started playing to be like comfortable with that uh, from mm. the start. And by the time we got into it later, the characters had kind of settled into their various social roles and hierarchies. But here as we're getting to know each other, and uh, as Chris pointed out, um, as Isabel and Cloak get to know each other, um, there's probably going to be a little bit of butting of heads and there's probably even going to be some, hey, can you do this favor for me kind of stuff? Not even the the bumping heads things, but just passing on favors and, hey, would you do this? And Doors is built into the system. And for those of you who are at home and are, uh, good job, Nightbot, uh, and are unsure of what this is, um, it's basically a social combat uh social conflict i think is probably a better term uh way of basically applying that continual pressure and not necessarily doing favors to get a favor but just kind of being um present in somebody's mind and life to the point of when you eventually ask for something they're like oh yeah hmm I, i guess that maybe i can do that for you and depending on how big of an ask it is Mm-hmm. Um, determines how difficult and how much time it's going to spend uh, spend doing it. If you have a very good impression and somebody really likes you from the get-go, this is something that you can whittle them down over a course of a conversation. If, however, they don't like you or uh, you just give off a you know a bad vibe or say have the air of menace merit um you might have a lower (laughs) impression uh to somebody who may take a couple days to do uh all this of course without talking about using magic um and specifically that part is aimed at npcs but for players um they have the option at the end to go you know what i know you've done a bunch of this stuff to influence me but i as the player do not want the character to do that um so i'm gonna say nah no thanks but they will then take a condition that kind of reflects the ask and the uh the condition that is kind of placed on them after the fact which basically means the player says no thanks my character is not going to do that and gets xp for it um that xp of course uh that condition tied to that xp um kind of pushing them in a similar direction but now that player has agency over how they're going to how their character is going to respond to that um are we comfortable with that i mean we we've just spent a couple months playing games together getting to know each other and i think all of us know nobody's going to be asked anything weird we have the rules set in place are we are we pretty good with that uh because okay head nods yeah mm-hmm. yeah i think so i think it was something that we yeah. at least ash craig and i you're know, like by the time that we kind of had that second talk we're like yeah you know this could work but then like you said like you know we kind of the characters were already settled mm-hmm. yeah. and and that's that like social hierarchy was more just none of us have a right to tell the other not to do something because we've all done something stupid enough right <laughs> like we've lost that privilege right um cool but yeah i think i think it's good yeah we got mm-hmm. good head nods around cool uh so uh with that uh we pick up um and uh Oh, it is still. Um, just let me jump over to Conca. Make sure I have the right date. That's right. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, it is still April twenty four, eighteen forty six, um, and uh, mm, same day. Same day. Um, our our good friends Mortimer Bethune and his uh, his posse. Um, 
because we're in the West, everybody's got a posse, right? Um, mm-hmm. have, have, have arrived in Purgatory Bluff and brought with them the Davies safety candle, uh, lantern, lamp, one of those. Um, miners are not super enthused by it, but Cloak is going to try it with their mine. Um, ooh, which does bring me to a question I uh, wanted to clear up with Ralph. Um, mm-hmm. Are... Is uh, is Ungun Cloak and the sisters actual shift leaders and therefore actually getting in and spending time mining? Or are they a bit more hands off and there are other members of the cult, probably that tier that, you know, to use the dot term, that three dot mystery cult level mm-hmm. who are the actual shift leaders? I think it's probably um, good for there to be some structure like that. So the sisters are at the fifth dot, Mm -hmm. the way Cloak um, has it is that people get to the fifth instead of in some mystery cults where there's one person at five and then you get to the fourth. He's trying to get everybody to ascend all the way through the mystery cult so that he doesn't have to be there to lead it all the time, Mm -hmm. right? So the sisters are the the only two that have gotten to the fifth and there are are four at the fourth Mm -hmm. level. And you think those uh, I, are probably the shift leaders then, perhaps? Yeah, I think that would be okay. I thought about it or- originally that Cloak and the two sisters would be the shift leaders mm-hmm. uh, so that they would not be removed from the onerous task of mining because they all wouldn't think that that's appropriate to just make everybody else mine mm-hmm. and they'd be more hands off. However, it probably would make a lot of sense <laughs> to uh, cede responsibility to those at the fourth level. Mm -hmm. So that they don't have to do as much onerous mining. And that at that point, because Cloak and the two sisters are leading the cult in other ways, that they're not responsible for every single thing that the Maroons do. So they can move back and forth and contribute in other ways. Right. And notably also cuts down on the like, well, there's, you know, a good 10 hours of the day where they're just gone because they're mining. Exactly. Um, And even if you look at like Marina and some of the other shift leaders, a lot of what they do ends up being administrative stuff anyways so yeah. even the shift leaders who in the cult probably actually do some mining um mm-hmm. at least for the other uh group edgar furnace uh marina i can't remember her last name and tahoma uh, mm-hmm. uh Lucia, are, i think is marina's last mm-hmm. name um are you know they they show up they manage and oh hey there's this tricky bit you know they'll pick up a pickaxe or something like that but for the most part they're a little more hands off anyways so cool mm-hmm. um, so they've all mined but yeah probably at this point mm-hmm. uh, the fourth the uh, people at the fourth tier so cool um so yes uh cloak and the uh the black miners are basically yeah it's fine we'll use the the lamps and you know we're not afraid of it getting a little darker um and yeah. as cloak said hey if it makes us safer then yeah we'll give it a shot um meanwhile <laughs> in town um very quickly on the very first episode theo goes hey there's other mages here <laughs> uh and then proceeds to scare the bejesus out of Gisela uh, by seeing um, uh, it was the signature Nimbus, if I remember correctly. Uh, Un- unintentionally. Unintentionally. Uh, oh, yeah. And so, Spooked. yes, Gisela has run uh, run off home and uh, Theo, who followed, was like, uh, was sent packing by uh, by Mama. And said, no, 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 she's not here. Um, you know, go check the general store. Um and uh, we pick up with Isabel, who uh, has a um, <laughs> uh, little bit of a social faux pas out on the green um, and embarrass herself a little bit. But I believe we've already cleared that condition. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and is in the bar dancing and singing. Well, primarily playing the flute, a little bit of singing, a little bit of dancing. A uh, little oh. swish and sway more than a dance. A uh, twirl. A twirl. Uh, Skirt goes spinny. Right. Um, and uh, with a spirit enhanced flute, uh, a little bit of spellcraft there, um, you know, doubling up the flute uh, notes and such, um, is at this point just entertaining um, the newly arrived guests, uh, Mortimer, Jules, and uh, Rilla who are currently being uh, waited on, I guess, is because I think uh, Madame Robert probably does actually wait on them between, mm-hmm. you know, basically prodding Mortimer for 
his long term plans. Uh, right. Like, oh, your drink is empty. Let me go get you, you know, uh, or let me pour actually because she's probably got the bottle there. So, uh, but yeah, we pick up there um, as we listen to a um, silver flute, if I remember correctly, uh, being played. Uh, well, Cassiterum. <clears throat> yeah. uh, so perfected tin. Tin. Thank tin. You. Yeah. I think it it used to be a very um, like cheap like ten whistle sort of thing. Mm, yeah. Um, and came with me through the primal wilds. Through the primal wilds. Um, I have some pictures that I found that I put up on the, the my pen board, but all of the um, specifically the Cassiterian part that I'm picturing is all of the um i don't know flute technology um the fingerings i guess is mm-hmm. The, mm-hmm. um and they're all shaped like um leaves and petals and vines connected mm-hmm. together keys. Yeah. keys there you go um i never played an instrument other than being pretty bad at the drums for a little while I played um, flute for many years. There you go. Oh, well, cool. help me with these things sometime. <laughs> uh, it was far more fun to watch you just, you know, struggle. It's just like the, the, the things. It's like, what, what things? The, keys. <laughs> the buttons. The buttons. The make different go. sounds buttons. Um, <laughs> anyways. Um, yeah. Um, I think as I finish up my performance um I think Isabel is starting to get more in a habit of looking around Hmm. with her mage sight and seeing the way that she changes things um looking at resonance and stuff like that and, and getting an idea of how exactly that works. And I don't think she's figured it out very well yet. Um, enough to be like, like she has two dots in spirit, but I don't think she's like totally mastered both of those dots. Right. Right. That's, that's fair. Right. Sure. Um, so yeah, I, I think, that, like stepping aside, like getting out of the spotlight, so to speak, for a second, um, and in the guise of like grabbing drinks for a couple tables and stuff like that. Um, just what is going on? Sure. Uh, with uh, uh, well, well, we'll start with the easy one with Life Sight. Uh, hi, everybody here in the in the tavern, uh, which is becoming slowly more and more packed as. Uh, you know, people were outside, you know, you did a little bit of come and drink and oh, that was that was silly. And there was a bit of a, a stumble there. But people are like, well, yeah, you know, we're here and, you know, the we're getting later into the afternoon and evening. Um, and at least within town, um, there's very few people who have like time sensitive work. Um, right. You know, you can just, you know, kind of pick up and, you know, drop stuff, you know, the general store. Lock the door, turn the little sign that says close and walk away. And yep, general store is closed. Bummer. Um, and so more and more people have you know started to to come in. Uh, notably, Anastasio has uh, has come in, uh, who, uh, as if you joined us last week, is kind of but not quite the mayor, uh, especially within town. Um, he, he's a big central hub. He's the one who owns the general store and Short of Enright is probably the richest guy in town, and he's also single, which also brings with him everywhere he goes, not necessarily an entourage or anything like that, but there's definitely attention uh, from various unmarried women um, or married women who wants to set them up. The girls from the background of the Gaston song. Got it. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Um, But yes, uh, back to Life Sight. Everybody here alive, healthy. Um, there are definitely the presence of multiple toxins within the bar. 
because alcohol. Uh, <laughs> but nobody seems like, uh, and actually now that I think about it, Isabel is really good at telling when somebody has had enough. Uh, just like, no, 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 no. You were at your limit. Yes, I know you only had one drink, but that's all you're having. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, everybody seems to be at that, you know, start of, uh, you know, nice little buzz kind of thing. Nobody's getting deep into their cups. Uh, that usually tends to happen as, uh, you know, the miners come down um, and, you know, yeah. Uh, but uh, Spirit Sight obviously reveals that, yep, this is a town. So the gauntlet here is a little on the robust side. Um, it is also a small town, so it's nothing like a big city, though. For her, I'm sure she's like, this is it's tougher here than out <laughs> in the wild. But that's her that that's the extremes of her. Uh, right. experience um and then uh nobody here seems to have the resonant condition um nobody's tied into spirits in any way and uh what's the other one um uh there are no manifested spirits uh save for the little bit dwindling on your uh on your flute from the little moat that you kind of prodded into waking up a little bit um however uh you can still see lingering on mortimer uh, the effects of Cloak's uh, spell uh, from his signature Nimbus from viewing his uh, nature, uh, the no nature spell, excuse me, um, which if you'll remind me, uh, Ralph, was it? Oh, it was the uh, the uh, adrenal, uh, the end oh, of the overwhelming adrenal, adrenal fatigue. Yeah. yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. Just, oh, hi, I'm so tired after fighting the entire world. Um and I think that would be the only effect currently visible because Ash, uh, sorry, Gisela and uh, Theo cast spells on one another. Um, no, I cast a spell on Mortimer, but it didn't work. Ah, that's right. So I don't know. Does it stick to him if it didn't? No, it didn't work. Yeah, it didn't, yeah. It didn't uh, manifest. So, yeah, there's no uh, lingering marks. So, but yeah, so you definitely have that. Hmm, I... Yeah, you know, that's a very weird physical feeling, which as a theorist, um, but also realizing, but it's only while I'm looking at him. Um, but that seems to be uh, about all you can see with your just active mage site. Right. Was there something further you were looking for, or are we going to flex our focused mage site for the first time, or just you know you're doing that first look about? Um, yeah, I think she's she's curious enough. Cool. All right. Um, and as uh, if anybody is new here, this is a little thing that we have uh, house ruled. It's not homebrew really. Uh, it's just house ruling um, folks made site because um, scrutiny can be kind of a bummer and gets a little spammy with dice. So um, long term scrutiny, it takes like weeks at a time. Uh, so all that is possible is a quick revelation, uh, which is going to be Gnosis, plus the Arcana you're using to study with, minus the opacity. Um, in this case, you're st studying the signature Nimbus. Okay, so I think that's just a minus two. Um, it's still going to be a, a tough roll. Yep, but... Just a minus two, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you have faith in you. Yeah. Willpower did it. Mm. I was going to say, wait a second. How is that for? Okay, yeah, willpower. Durr. Um, awesome. Uh, so immediately um, with with a revelation, you don't obviously get the big details, but I think one of the, the surface information that you definitely get is this is a, a result of awakened magic. Absolutely. Somebody did this not the same way, but a similar way to um, what you do. Um, you recognize also, uh, similar to Ash, uh, excuse me, Gisela recognizing Arcana that she's never performed herself. You recognize Mind, uh, which as a theorist is like, this is gross. Like, who does yeah, this? Just like hackles. Hmm. Um, you also get um, how old it is, which is, it's 
this is fresh, uh, which I think, especially with the Thyrsus vibe, is there's that fresh turned mud, dirt, tracks kind of vibe of something just passed. Um, and then what practice this mystery? Eh, uh, well, yeah, I guess you'd, you'd recognize that this is a knowing thing, but what exactly it was knowing, you don't know. It's a putt. Hmm. All right. That gets filed into the... Hmm. hmm. Huh. <laughs> so you're, you know it was knowing, but you don't know... No- you don't know what it knows. Yeah, you don't know what you don't know. Right. Um, okay. And then, like, still have to do my job and stuff, so I can't just, like, stare at him forever or, <laughs> you, know, I can, you know, break my um, facade. Sure. Is, is Isabel very much wants to just fit in mm-hmm. and manipulate to her heart's content and not get, like caught up in things and not have to explain beyond a certain right. level. Um, which, as she basically steps back into that work, uh, Craig, is Theo showing up, um, or is she kind of hunkered down with Catherine? Um, would have gone home first to talk to Catherine. Okay, so we can pick up there if you want. Um, and uh, I, I don't know how she feels about this. Uh, just to make sure things aren't too far away from the wagon in case we need to leave in a hurry. Gotcha. Is sort of the way she approaches. But uh, Catherine, can you do something for me? I kind of made a bad impression, I guess, on... Uh, um, I don't know the names. Sorry. Gisela? Gisela. On Gisela's mother. Mrs. Bauer. Yeah, Mrs. That's Bauer. true, yeah. Could you do me a favor and see if you can get in touch with Gisela and set up a meeting for her and I? Over tea here at the camp, maybe, or something? Uh, you uh, seem to get along with the locals better than I do. And you're <laughs> killing me, Craig. You, you made all these NPCs. You didn't tell me what Catherine looks like. Could you could you regale us all with a quick description yes. of what Catherine looks like? Um, so Catherine is um, a fairly petite um Blonde hair, uh, usually um, in a ponytail. Um, when she's out in town, she'll have a bonnet on and that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, dresses sort of in the same way as Theo. So like a colorful skirt and a white shirt. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I, I, uh, I know that lines. she's 23. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, oh, quick, let me grab the description. Oh, Craig set me up. <laughs> no, that's fine. Yeah, and she looks up and I imagine uh, for, for Theo and Catherine... One of them is always at the camp, keeping an eye on stuff, keeping an eye mm-hmm. on Valdosia. Uh, is that right? The right pronunciation? Val, Valdosia? Valdosia? Valdosia. 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 If I read it as it was written, uh, it would be clear that way. Uh, <laughs> looking at you, Thrysis. Um, <clears throat> uh, and so, yeah, she's you know probably with a pile of laundry uh, mm-hmm. She probably works a lot cheaper than, you know, for instance, Gisela's mother. Um, mm-hmm. And there's probably a lot of, you know, dirty minor clothes in a pile and then some clean ones hanging up. And, you know, she kind of looks up from the wash basin and what kind of bad impression? I don't know. I just uh, asked if I could. Something happened in town today, uh, and I wanted to talk to Gisela about it, but uh, her mom was playing, you know, Cerberus at the gate sort of thing and seemed very unhappy <laughs> to see me. It's, I mean, you know the women around here, they're not really fond of me, uh, and that's probably what it all is, but uh, she was going a little bit mama bear, so I thought maybe you might have more luck getting in touch with Gisela. Um, and, and remind me, Catherine is uh, not Romani? No. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, she kind of looks and, okay, well, um, these and like points to a pile of things and said, these have to be done today. Um, and sure, uh, no problem. points to, you know, next to the, you know, 
cauldron for lack of a better term of you know warm water there is on the fire a pot of some kind of stew she says that is ready um so help yourself and i'll go uh, well it, it doesn't have to happen today i know there's a lot of people in town so the you know, tavern's probably gonna be pretty busy okay so it might be a chance to pick up some extra coin but just sometime in the next couple of days if you could see if you can get next to use them invite her over for tea or something and like she she probably gives you this look of i thought i was ditching laundry but okay <laughs> uh finds you kind of settles back well, down on a stool and says all right well eat something before you go to the tavern sure, no problem. you don't eat when you're working yes I okay <laughs> um, uh, and uh make sure you spend some time with Veloja. absolutely yeah. Um, which and just to we're, we're probably like folding laundry while we're talking and, right. and stuff. Well, Theo's talking and Veloja is just helping fold laundry or whatever. But. Right. And to mm -hmm. clarify for those, uh, because we haven't mentioned these names, uh, Catherine is Theo's partner. Uh, they were roommates. Um, and uh, uh, Veloja is Theo's daughter. Um, so, uh, who, whoop, I, I didn't close Conca, I just lowered. Uh, Veloja is seven. So she doesn't speak right. for reasons. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, right, right age range to be, you know, Gisela's, uh, you know, siblings friend. But they're on basically opposite ends of uh, town in, in many ways. <laughs> also. <true. laughs> uh, so cool. Uh, so, yeah, you, you know, probably fold some laundry, eat some food, and then, uh, especially considering some of the time shenanigans are probably arriving back at the tavern shortly after. And because this is a movie, uh, arriving, you know, sometime after the revelation of, uh, by Isabella's complete. I will get these names correct, and I swear I will not say anybody's wrong name, except for weird, because that's just a word. Uh, <laughs> so yes, um, arrive... And yes, the place is not packed the way it probably will be tomorrow um, because, you know, Mr. Enright is going to be bringing in stuff and is definitely going to be doing the drinks on the house. Well, not the house on me um, kind of vibe. Uh, but yeah, definitely the the kind of time to pick up some extra pay and then, you know, the, the tip here and there. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, at that point, I believe also, uh, you know, at this point, a lot of the town, uh, those who live in town are here. Um, uh, I believe probably even um, some of the farmers um, who were in town because they had something to, you know, sell to Mr. Enright um, or uh, the, uh, the general store or something like that are also starting to come in because offloading, haggling, all that stuff is done. Anastasio is in here, so you're not going to get any deals done. Or actually, I take that back. Anastasio is probably holding court um, at a table with a bunch of farmers. Um, and he has a pretty good vibe with them because of his brother, who's also out there. It's like, no, no, I know what it means to, to work in the dirt. Sort of. That man has never lifted a plow or a shovel in his life. But he can play it Lifting off. a plow would be impressive, but... Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, the Maroons uh, can to, lift a plow. Just to clarify, Theo wouldn't necessarily insert herself, but she would just sort of wave to uh, Andrea that, that she's available. If, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I think you get the, like, as soon as you, you know, make eye contact, she just points back towards, like, the kitchen or wherever the aprons are, you know, hanging. It's like, yeah, put something on, you know, so you know your way around <laughs> the place enough to, yeah. You know, and like Isabel like spins by you with like tray of drinks and stuff like that. It's like, oh hey. Hey, welcome <laughs> in. <laughs> Glad to have some help. If you want, I could dance. If you want, I could dance later. And then scoots off into the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Um and uh as a uh little note as you know they when well, the evening kind of starts to progress um while uh madame robert is there not hanging on mortimer's arm but is actively engaging him in conversation and mortimer let's be honest 
Madame Robert is around his age, actually probably a little bit younger, um, but she's a worldly woman that he can talk with and converse <clears throat> with. And she is really good at her job and is just keeping him talking and keeping him buying drink after drink after drink, uh, whether or not he quite realizes it. Um, but uh, uh, Rilla, uh, you see, has kind of moved away from that table, which has also become uh, like the center hub of people hanging on and listening to what Mortimer is Mm -hmm. saying and hearing news from London, which for many of them is the exotic far off or for some of them is home. Um, But Rilla has kind of moved away and has found um, to, to play on the D and D trope. She's found the shadowy corner booth away from stuff. Um, Some, some spot that's got at least a candle or lamp and has rather than, uh, you know, kind of engage in the party kind of vibe. Uh, there's not really a party so much as, you know, an active tavern. Um, has pulled out pen and paper and some notebooks and stuff like that and appears to be studying or transcribing mm. or something. She's She's got one set of, well, several <laughs> sets of documents and then a book that she is writing in. Um, mm. Jewels um, are... I almost said Paramour. Um, Prey for Isabel um, <laughs> has uh, also kind of moved away from from Mortimer. Uh, there's not a lot of attention for jewels with Mortimer around, um, and so he's you know kind of moved away. And uh, I mean, it's a Western. It's got a bar, right? And I think mm-hmm. he's probably you know moved in and found a seat there, uh, which basically gives the two of you three different targets to go after. Um, I feel like Jules probably like, so there's this thing that bar regulars do that they don't realize that they do. And it's, they try to get your attention at every possible opportunity. And they're like, Oh, I just, you know, like, uh, and, and you have to play this game where you are listening to that story they're telling, whether it takes 30 seconds or 30 minutes because you keep having to come back and you have to like (laughs) never, never lose the, the ability to like keep track of what they were saying and seeming interested and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Even if it's the worst goddamn story you've ever heard in your life. (laughs) Sure. Um, but I, I was, I was picturing Jules after our couple interactions today, just being like, "Uh, Oh, hi. Um, just second row i had a quick question or yeah um uh, very specifically jules is not telling stories so much as asking a lot of questions about purgatory bluff and probably mm. isabel um just because she's here um if mm. theo gets kind of swept in uh jules will probably be asking questions about <laughs> theo as well he is he's like a five-year-old but why? But how? What? And is asking these questions and occasionally making notes. Mm. He's got a small little, you know, ye small little uh, thing and a little piece like of. That. Mm-hmm. But it's a little, little uh, book uh, that he's just, you know, adding little notes. Uh, but yeah. If at any point any of you actually want to delve into any of that. We, we yeah. Yeah. I would like to work out like the common thread and what he's asking about or the the why mm-hmm. um specifically like kind of being very um like underhanded about it almost mm-hmm. sure uh, like like kind of salting stories and stuff like that and overplaying uh, one aspect of life here and then backing down. I was like, Oh no, 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 I'm just fucking with you. Like, not fucking, but obviously, but uh, <laughs> like absolutely like kind of throwing him around mm. to throw him off kilter a little bit. Sure. So that he'll, you know, be forced to open up and explain what he's doing a little bit more. Sure. So like give if, him the right information. Right. Or if even less, uh, uh, just picking up based on what he's asking about to figure out what he's after. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Specifically, uh, it's specifically I was trying to avoid it. You telling me I had to roll empathy. 
Hmm. Because that's no. not what I'm trying to do. Is I'm like I'm trying to force it, right? It's oh yeah. Not, uh, no, this is this understanding. Is, no, this is um, <laughs> to 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 borrow um, uh, from Marvel. This is the the Black Widow. Like, oh, you're interrogating me. No, I'm interrogating you. <laughs> moment. No, this dummy's right. about to give me everything I everything I need <laughs> while she's strapped to a chair. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, by far one of the best scenes. That was that, a great scene. Yep. Um, it's for yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what, um, what, uh, what are you thinking of rolling here? As I pull up a character. Butterfuge or yeah. socialize. Um, either way. I, I think this is, if you're not wanting him to figure out that you're asking, I think this is yeah. going to be subterfuge. Oh. Um, and with jargon, I, I think that the, um, corrals specialization that I have. Oh yeah. Or socialize would apply. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. do it, yeah. And I think, um, um manipulation. I, um, I, I was gonna say manipulation. I know for you, this is actually the same as I pull them up. I was gonna say manipulation or composure basically to control the conversation. <laughs> and just he's gonna keep asking questions. You're like, no, 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 I'm going to go this way. Yeah, either one works <laughs> because in this case, you've got both. Um, I think I'm flavoring it with manipulation, okay. And as he's kind of prodding and trying to trying to get hold um, of the conversation himself, um, I, I don't think this is quite contested so much as he's resisting your uh, mm-hmm. direction. So I think um, this is probably going to be his composure. So it's going to be a minus three. Okay. Um, always be closing. Mm-hmm. Don't forget Except, the reroll. Uh, yeah. Minus one to their resolve or composure. Okay. So he's got a minus two on minus yours. Two. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, so I'm at just a minus one. All right, because you're adding your specialization. Four Four successes. successes. So close to an exceptional. So close. Um, So yes, um, to to, um, boil down a series of questions and conversations Mm -hmm. and stuff like that, He's asking a lot about the history of the town and is trying to find people who have been here a while. Um, And uh, I think it's probably when Theo kind of comes by and gets asked a couple questions and he's very interested. He's very interested. Oh, you've only been here for I think it's a month, right, Uh, Craig? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, you've only been here a month and immediately he's not dismissive, but all of a sudden and less concerned about what, you know, um, but Isabel, who's been here a little bit longer, definitely only more, slightly. Right. Um, yeah, yeah but uh, that, that little bit. Okay. That's better. But a lot of the questions he's prodding you about are like, okay, well, you know, who's been here longer, who's, you know, and Anastasio, which of course gives him a look over and he sees that table that's full of people. He's like, I'm not going to be able to get anything out of that. <laughs> right now right. uh mr enright uh the bowers have been here a year I like think. two years yeah. two years They've been here a bit. and so you know and those are the names that end up getting written down of like people he needs to he needs to follow up with yeah yeah and like i'm not actually withholding any information from him Mm-mm. it's just that like cracking up in the walnut yeah a little bit and uh, while Isabel is doing this over the next you know, half hour or so, uh, Theo, is there any particular focus you have or is it just being here and being seen and making some money or? Um, I'm making some money and not being seen. Like sure. uh, Theo, is, she doesn't usually do a very good job of it, but she's trying to be sort of background. Mm-hmm. Um, attention doesn't usually do well for her unless she's looking for it so right or more specifically yeah. uh, based on her striking looks probably the good looking waitress and then leaving like the a- any further notice you know to yeah mm-hmm. uh, yeah which uh, you know for un- unfortunately small town which if you have grown up in a small town um you know everybody knows theo um you know everybody recognizes you and for the most part just because it is the tavern, nobody, nobody's really picking on you. Nobody, you know, is uh, 
you know, burning their man around you. Uh, Cause it's the tavern. This is the kind of thing you would expect. Same thing with like Isabel. Um, mm. I think for Theo, this is probably one of the few places where she can probably relax a little bit and not worry about a lot of those stereotypes coming up. Um, but it is one of those things of, there's this invisible line for every person that she has to be aware of and not cross. Um, but yeah, for the most part, you know, especially you're the one bringing drinks, like you are the saint, <laughs> you know, yeah. yay, you know, um, but uh, yeah, that, that's cool. Uh, is there and, and more mechanically Craig side of things? Is there anything that you're looking to do while you are here? Um, I'm just uh, keeping out for any other weird twinges and stuff because the twice in one day is kind of throwing her off a little bit. Sure, absolutely. So uh, she's a little distracted if she's you know kind of half paying attention to that, but still trying to work mm-hmm. the room and that kind of thing. Right, which mm-hmm. I guess we should backtrack real quick and clarify that uh, Chris, she's obviously turned her mage side off because it's so distracting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. Cool. Um, uh, that said. Oh, okay. I think I can help advance this a little bit more. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> just hold on there because, sure. you know, uh, to, to borrow the blades in the dark thing. Well, everybody else is gone. So here's some uh, consequences to actions um, kind of thing. Uh, mm-hmm. As you guys are doing your various work, um, there is another twinge that peripheral mage site predator passing by. Um, Oh my gosh. Uh, I will get words these. Whispers. Yes, words of whispers as you guys are working the crowd. Um, and it just kind of, you know, shivers through spines to, you know, just kind of make a uh, general term and then is gone. It's just like this short little burst um, meta knowledge, you know, very similar to like when Cloak cast his mind spell was there and then it was then it was over that six seconds. Um, this feels like it was even shorter. Um, like this was just a momentary little blip of just like, was that even the real thing or am I just remembering it? Um, out of character, I will give you just a little bit of understanding that it is not an awakened spell. It is. It literally did not even last for a full turn kind of thing. It's, it is a very phantom passing by thing. Uh, notably, <laughs> Um, you guys feel it, and elsewhere, Gisela, you also feel this. Uh, Cloak, I'm we're, not we're... having a good time. No. <laughs> uh, uh, Cloak... uh, what did uh, what did it have an Arcana? It wasn't awakened oh, magic. He said correct. It wasn't awakened magic, but it may fall under a purview. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you'll double check your merit real quick to see uh, if it only applies, um, and then Cloak, where would you be as like sun is starting to set, kind of thing. Hmm. Maybe making sure that uh, the transition between the second and third shift is going well and that people have everything they need. Gotcha. So somewhere between the barracks and the mines. Yeah. So and then, and then, you know, he'd probably move in the town. Um, He has taken after, you know, settling himself for a month, has tried to make a habit of at least walking around so people see him at different parts of the day. So Mm -hmm. he was probably last there, you know, many hours ago during the announcement. And it'd be a good idea for them to show his face because he knows that the safety of the Maroons is partially dependent upon how familiar people are right. with the with the leader of the group. Gotcha. Um, for for our sake um, and based on the fact that you're talking about it being the transition, um, mm-hmm. I don't think Cloak has quite made it down there. And I'm mostly adding this for a little meta thing out uh, at out towards the mines and the barracks. You do not feel this peripheral mage site thing. Cool. I linked the text. It doesn't mention anything about a spell. It says when you sense an effect with your mage site, you know the arcanum it falls under. Arcanum. Okay, cool. Uh, So this would fall under... Yeah, we'll say this falls under prime. This is good. That's fine. This is real good. (laughs) Let me pull up my other merit. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. Uh, so, uh, but we'll, I will make mental note that at this point or sometime shortly after Cloak is probably heading out. Cloak probably arrives in town like after sunset, I would imagine. Uh, yeah. Or well, 
probably because he's not going to make that walk in the dark. Uh, no. But lo- probably arriving around sunset. Yeah. Okay. Once the transition is good, um, and it, once it gets to the point that they can handle the transition on their own, and they know how to reach him if they need anything, then he would start investing more of his time getting to know the town so mm-hmm. that he can protect people and also do what he can to help people. Right. So. Cool. Uh, Chris, going back to you, you said uh, you could help Craig find a, another mage. Um, I think Isabel puts some pressure on Theo for them to entertain after a bit. Okay. Especially once a couple miners show up and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which actually is probably right. Um, so Cloak may uh, is probably at this point arriving because the miners are getting out and yeah, they're beelining towards the tavern, which the mines are not huge. Each shift has about 10 people working them, uh, but 10 people in a smallish community like this, that's a big rush at the tavern. Right. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, in the past month, this would have happened a couple times where as well would play the flute. And he would and dance, it. yeah. Cool. Let's, uh, uh, let's make a roll to see if I can uh, put on a, a second good show in a day. Sure. Yeah. It All went right. so well earlier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to scroll back up here. And if you're spending willpower again, it's another seven dice. If you're not, it'll be four. I think I will do so. The nine again. Or excuse me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nine again. Oh, (laughs) again, denied the exceptional success. Uh, um, I think I am going to make that my praxis, though. Oh, the, um, the spirit. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Uh, so spend That's another willpower. Um, and yeah, mark that as your praxis, uh, which makes that an exceptional success. I'm fine with that. Um, oh, and of Let's course, I have your willpower. character sheet pulled up. So all of a sudden when you moved, let me dig out these retired characters. <laughs> Let's pull up good old Abaddon. He is good. I'm, I'm, don't worry, Abaddon is not suddenly going to show up in this game, or is he? Um, but it'll be a handy little uh, tool uh, for remembering what skills are. Cool. Um, so yes, that makes an a exceptional success, which does give you a willpower back. Um, and then uh, what other option would you like? Um uh arcane condition uh yeah yeah okay. i'm gonna take a condition uh i i think this will uh hmm i'm trying to not be like i'm going to give you a condition to be better at the thing that you just wanted to be better at um mm-hmm. I, well, think I haven't this... actually done the thing yet i'm just waking it up well specifically yeah but i i don't want to Double dip on here's a spell sure, sure. to be better at expression. Also, here's a condition to be better at expression. Um, I think especially because it is coaxing this spirit. Let's let's look at um, uh, probably persuasion. Um, sure. Yep, yeah. just a little plus two on that. Um, cool. So yeah, you've uh, re-enchanted uh, your flute. Uh, hey, Craig, <laughs> Theo all of a sudden gets those same wordless whispers. Yeah, we're like. We're like in the middle of a, a song and a storytelling and, and Theo doing a little dance and stuff like that. And like as we build towards the climax of the story is when I actually cast the spell and, and the suddenly the flute just almost comes to life. All right. Theo is also in the middle of a crowd dancing with eyes on him. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we're trying not react. Sure. But there's strange shit, strange fuckery about about in the town. <laughs> oh, the Canada came out. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and yeah, I, no need for you guys to to roll um, since at this point you're just uh, dancing. Uh, excuse me, expression performance kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just are. Um, but yeah, um, especially since it is towards the crescendo, um, you know. Theo, you have that, you know, 
time to finish the dance. Um, obviously, yeah, turning on your mage site right now would be terrible because all of a sudden it's hard to see your own feet. But... Yeah. Um, but definitely want to, after the dance is finished, she'll be a little bit winded and want to get some air and that's she'll use that time to turn on your mage site. Sure. Figure what the hell's going on. Yeah, so uh, quite obviously, uh, you can see um, a doubled up uh, effect of the signature Nimbus um, on uh, on the flute, uh, on Isabel's flute, uh, which I'm trying to remember, did we go over your signature Nimbus? It did not. Okay. It's also going to look wild as fuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For other reasons. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. If you have it handy, you go ahead and... I do. Um... Isabel's signature Nimbus is the sort of come down and and the the peace, but also the sort of sense of of being left wanting of just a little bit more of a storyteller finishing a tale near a fire and then walking off into the darkness. Ooh, that's cool. It's that you've just experienced something and you are are having to, to, to process it and to uh, to realize that it has changed you. Or to throw a very, very, very nerdy way of it. I've finished a book and I'm ready for the sequel. <laughs> book on we. The book hangover. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Love that. So just a mm-hmm. feeling and no visual effect? Um, it, apparently, like many of you, apparently no visual effects on your signature Nimbuses. That's fine. Not yet. That's true. They could. We barely know what magic one. is. There is visual effects on my immediate Nimbus. Right. I'm trying to avoid vision, just because I've noticed that um, sighted people tend to orient towards that when describing things in games Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and in order to adopt a slightly less ableist inclination. Oh, sure. Uh, Considering it's uh, described. Oh yeah. But it can also be done both. You know, there's absolutely. No, no I I know, I know that Mm -hmm. I know. I I realize that completely. I'm not saying that there's a problem with that. I'm just noting for your benefit that that I chose that intentionally to try and lean away from my inclination to make it visual. And like songbirds was fairly, multi-sensorial mm-hmm. yeah that's right as well I, so. I get that feeling when i'm looking at the flute mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and weirdly it's a doubling which i think for theo is probably a sensation of oh there's a thing that is doubled and then realizing no this is two separate occurrences without digging into it and doing a revelation uh but it is um clearly two of the same thing stacked on uh, probably initially looking like on Isabel and then realizing it's it's tied to the flute that she's got. Okay. And then there's the whole it's a perfected metal and you've got matter sight. Oh, yes. Yes. this is very oh, true. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I was I was so focused on the signature Nimbus thing. Uh, I didn't even think about. Yes. So a uh, quick check of, uh, you know, death and matter site. Yeah, death. Everybody's got souls. Nobody's a ghost. Uh, matter. Be yeah, up the durability and uh, value quality of items. Yeah, that's it looks like a very simple, you know, kind of standard flute, but it is. It is definitely more than that. And there's probably a bit of a Theo kicking herself of how did I not notice that before? Um, yeah. Very true. Matter sight. All right. So mentally, um, Isabel goes into the notepad. <laughs> As somebody to have a talk with you. Okay. I'm just going to hit this. Um, then I'm going to go outside and just try and gather my thoughts because this has been an overwhelming day so far. Sure. And, and, go ahead, Dash. Been, and it's not even done. And what are you casting? Uh, basically, after getting hit by another new weird thing, mm-hmm. this is one that I haven't from a third strange thing mm-hmm. that is not mine. Mm-hmm. Um. I guess I'm doing a divination focused on yourself. Sure. Um, 
basically, I want to... Because also, I don't think she's grasped what reach is. Mm -hmm. Um, It's more just a... She's asking yes or no questions. Just say, is this good? Is this bad? Mm -hmm. Um, And basically, all of the the weird things that have happened that she has noticed, Mm -hmm. the weird pings of assorted other things. I want the idea of, are these a danger? Cool. I gotcha. Um, uh, And just a quick note on reach though. Um, Remember that at this point, every new mage has had the, um, uh, almost called that Numina. Help me out here. Uh, Shoot. Little Numa. Numa, thank you, of of being a new mage. Numa, Numa, yeah. Oh, God. How to tell you're an elder millennial if you know Numa, Numa. Anyways, moving right along. Um, Yes, um, like every new mage like has this for a short time, basically unlimited reach just because there's all Mm -hmm. this mana in it. And not to correct you, but I I would imagine that every newly awakened mage, oh man, this is super easy. I can do whatever I want. And then when the Numa goes away, and then hard. they get slapped with paradox for the first time. All of a sudden, they're like, "Never mind, not doing that." Or that may be a reaction. <laughs> um, so cool. Uh, but yeah, feel free to go ahead and roll your uh, four six dice. Yeah, because I don't. I think the only reach I need is instant because I'm not doing a ritual. I am. Yeah, you don't want to be card. sitting there for three hours. Uh, but in general, it's yeah. Uh, where's my well? Six. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. One success. That's all Way you need. Uh, cool. Wait, all, uh, these, so what you... all these new new things that I have noticed, sensations around, are these good or bad? Or will they be dangerous? Yes or no? Ah. Uh, will they be dangerous? <laughs> yes. <Cool. laughs> And I, I think at that moment, <laughs> she probably goes. Yes, or or the potential is there. Nope, yeah. we don't get that yes because. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, no, or, unknown. Yep. Um, yeah, I, and I put it in our chat. Her um, her fortune telling, divination, any sort of looking for an answer thing. Mm-hmm. It's just a normal deck of cards. Um, king and queen are good. Jack and Ace are bad. Everything else is done now. Cool. Uh, okay, um, cool. One I thing, like uh, just to um, not mess with probability or anything like that, I uh, to, to kind of, if you'll let me, um, I think it's a drawing the card, playing it down, and regardless of what the card actually shows, there's a moment where she sees the answer before whatever real card is there. Um, you no, know. I like the idea of the probability being off because, like, if you're drawing, oh, okay, yes, so like notes, shuffling, like, yeah, it's like it's clearly you're doing magic. Statistically, mm-hmm. you should be drawing mostly nothings, right? Okay, but are you? No, maybe. Don't know. Okay, I I'm cool with that. I like that. Um, uh, primarily, I was like, hang on, I don't need you messing around with poker. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm with you. Um, not quite tarot reading, but yeah, drawing drawing a card at random. Um, all right. Uh, yes, it, it is definitely potent. It is definitely dangerous one way or another. Um, cool. Um, and uh, then I guess we can shimmy over here to uh, to cloak as mm-hmm. you arrive in town with, um, you know, uh. Not with, but you know, parallel to uh, a bunch of the white miners who are fin- mm-hmm. finishing up the second shift. Do any of the um, do any of the cult come down? Uh, do the sisters, or are you know, is this a, a thing cloak does to be disarming just the one black guy in in the middle of town? Yeah, he's talked about it with Sanite and Messie if they want to, right? Discuss that he's just trying to make himself present and have conversations with people learn things about them and try and 
I mean, people are threatened no matter what he does, um, especially because he does manifest that protective air. Air of menace, demeanor. scarred, a bit on the like, you know, what's yeah, resting bitch face for lack of a better term. I think that's so kind he, of in with the air of menace, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all in the air of menace, right? Like people are going to be less inclined to open up to him just intrinsically, and that's that's something he recognizes. But the thing is, the way air of menace works is. Um, People are more inclined to talk to him once they've gotten to know him a little more. So if it's the first time you've seen him and interacted with him, you're definitely going to be off foot. After that point, it's probably harder for him to persuade people of things. But still, at least they know him as a known quantity. And mm -hmm. if they've observed him just having a conversation and not harming someone, he thinks that's better for the Maroons. Mm -hmm. That he's habituating them to the notion that black people aren't intrinsically violent. Sure. Um, are you heading into the tavern? Okay. Yeah, he hates taverns, but he's definitely going into there because he thinks, you know, especially based on what um, Papa Legba has told him, right? And his, 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 um, his daemon, his metet has told him is that that's one place where he's going to need to do work. So he needs to think of it as an opportunity rather than a threat. Sure. Um, and then just a, a side question, mostly for Ralph, but you yes, know, uh, is does Cloak think that about every tavern um, and ev every place that serves alcohol, uh, uh, like you said, commercially, because uh, I, I don't think Cloak has any problem with alcohol itself. It's the commercialization of it. Um, or as he picked out this specific tavern because he's seen what some of the miners get up to. Well, he feels threatened by um, the what the miners might do when they're in their cups, mm -hmm. right? He's heard them say things when they first got there, and he's aware of the fact that domestic violence has happened in the town, right? Mm -hmm. um, we haven't discussed the extent of it, and I'm not trying to bring that in as a heavy theme, right? Just uh, a bunch of miners who are a bit frustrated. People are frustrated, right? If somebody gets drunk, it's highly likely that someone has thrown a punch mm -hmm. inappropriately before. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, concerning Cloak is looking for opportunities to prevent people from being harmed in that way and eliminate those chains that prevent them from ascending to virtue. Um, he, he's, he's aware of it. If it's happened in town, he's aware of it. So he thinks the tavern is a threat because it's enabling people to do that. And as I had mentioned before, he considers alcohol to be a bane in society for the most part, unless people have the means by which it does not control them. Because in his sight, whenever people are drinking, they're just adding additional links and reinforcing the strength of a chain that binds them to addiction. Gotcha. So, so he so he doesn't he does have a problem with alcohol in general as well. Because of the rum trade, things in the Caribbean, you know, alcoholism, oh, sure. right? Uh and he's recognized this as his own one of his own personal biases, but he's also well aware of the mundane and arcane significance of indulging too much in substance. So Sure. Okay. Yeah, no, that's cool. I'm just trying to get a, an idea because, you know, when of he course. walks in, you know, yeah. Madame Robert is going to have a reaction. I need to figure out what that's going to be. Of uh, course. He's on really good terms with her, at least if that's okay with you. Um, I think he would do what he can to provide his um, help when someone is unruly. And he would always be super respectful to her. Mm -hmm. So anyone who speaks French, despite the history in Haiti and, you know, slavery and French occupation and things like that, right? A, a, a Francophone is someone he considers um, much closer to a friend than mm -hmm. a stranger. Yeah, there's so, the familiarity and such. Yeah, yeah and so he, he has tried to ingratiate himself with her, at least by being available to help prevent somebody from being harmed. If somebody gets sloshed and they start getting violent or putting their hands on somebody, Cloak is quick with Madame Robert's um, direction, right? Mm -hmm. Um, he's not going to usurp her authority in the bar, but quick with her direction to um, to jettison that person from the bar, grab him and throw him out. Right, okay. like they they get one strike. If she says they need to go out, he he gets him out gotcha. when he's there. Mm -hmm. And then um, another thing that I, probably would be helpful for Cloak is that, as I mentioned, um, probably ambiguously once before, Cloak feels a greater affinity for animals than he does for people, and in mm -hmm. particular, he feels affinity for animals who've been domesticated. Mm -hmm. So dogs and horses. Right. Who people think of as beasts of burden or tools, he feels a strong affinity for them. Right. So I think we, as, we talked about that in the section zero. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So as he's walking through town, right, people's horses and stuff that are all a place, he's he's trying to maintain these relationships. So if they come up and lick his hand, he brings treats to give them. He'll stop to stroke the the 
um, the muzzle of a horse, their flank and stuff like mm. that, brings a horse brush, those kinds of things. He considers it an important aspect of his contributions to the collective <laughs> feeling in the town. Gotcha. Which probably, like, compared to him talking to people, like, him treating animals nicely is probably far more of a disarming thing yeah, but- <laughs> than he probably even realizes. Like, nobody really yeah. wants to talk to Cloak, but hey, he likes dogs. I like dogs. Maybe yeah. he's not so bad. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. At first, it's why is he touching my horse? I was like, oh. Oh, okay. My horse hates everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <How does> it- <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, yeah, exactly. I, I think we pick up with um, uh, with Cloak at uh, you know coming into the tavern. Uh, okay, cool. Theo, actually, I think you guys probably or you probably pass Theo as Theo kind of steps mm-hmm. out to the front to be like, oh, okay, I was dancing and what the hell was that? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you all are, you know, kind of passing. You're all so much in the vicinity. Well, Gisela is over in in her house playing mm-hmm. with cards. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yes. Um, uh, the at this point, especially with the miners coming in, there's definitely uh-huh. a step up in the uh, the activity, the loudness in okay. uh, in the bar. Uh, you see, as uh, I, I think from we'll use Cloak's perspective here, as you're stepping in, the tables are not packed full. Uh, mm-hmm. This place can probably support you know, basically the entirety of the mine down in here. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's definitely getting to every table is occupied. And uh, you can see Rilla, who previously had been, you know, at her own little table and she's just kind of doing work and sipping at like a mug or something um, Mm -hmm. has uh, is basically gathering her things together as she's probably getting the attention of probably more than a couple of the miners who are, you know, coming over and, because they have not had time to get drunk, um, are being overly friendly, but not like in a drunken fashion yet. And she's like, Ooh, nope, I see where this respectfully. Right. Yes. Oh, yeah. I got a good idea. Um, so, yeah. So she's she's putting her things together, and especially the, the place is getting loud. Um, OK. Yeah. And with, you know, for for Isabel and Theo. You see that, you know, her, her studying in a place like this, whatever she's doing, not going to happen. Uh, Cloak, you're just mm-hmm. probably noticing her just putting together packets and papers and, and bundling them up. Um, actually, uh, just to clarify, these were the same bundles of things that Jules had been carrying, just in case mm-hmm. anybody's <laughs> tracking inventory. Um, gotcha. And is crossing over towards uh, towards Mortimer and uh, Madame Robert. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, the conversation isn't super loud, but it carries because Madame Robert just does that when she speaks. Mm-hmm. Uh, she is used to <laughs> talking across a tavern of loud miners. Right. Um, uh, and she basically says, oh yes, I will have somebody, um, uh, I guess ready. Um, uh, my, uh, does she have a wagon or a carriage? Uh, regardless, she, her her vehicle. Actually, no, ready your horses, um, and so you can go up to Mister Enright's house. Um, and because uh, to backtrack a little bit, um, Madame Robert is trying to get Mortimer to get a, a room here in town since he's so interested. But um, they are all currently guests of Mr. Enright, of course. So mm-hmm. getting her her stuff together and, and heading back up that way. Um, but that's kind of where we pick up. So um, as uh, Madame Robert is probably finding one of the guys, one of the men who works here um, and, you know, hey, yeah, go get her stuff. Make sure it's all, you know, and so, you know, some would they have a stable attached? Probably not. Uh, this is not necessarily a stable hand, but one of the the guys mm. who cleans up and maybe does brewing or something like that comes out and you know gets the stuff. We established there's a still, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. So and uh, you know gathers and uh, gathers up her things and takes them out and kind of gets her her horse ready outside. Okay, so all that proceeds before Cloak is able to do anything in the bar. Uh, but if t- so, then he. He would he would converse with her when she's outside. Okay, yeah. Because uh, I was what I was planning on doing when you said, "Oh, she's sitting at the at a table still in the dark corner," 
and assembling her things and being harassed by people. Hmm. Um, not yet drunk men. <laughs> no, no, um, no harassment at all. Just she is she is anticipating she is a worldly and educated woman who goes, I'm at a bar surrounded by a bunch of guys who are starting to drink and I'm trying to work. This is not okay, the cool. yeah, this right. is not the environment for yeah. this. Because because Coke is just going to um, offer oh, yeah. to sit down and then suggest that um, while he's there, I doubt any of them are going to come over. <laughs> so um, he'll okay. just wait and have a brief conversation with her outside then. Sure. If uh, that's okay with you. Yeah, no, that's absolutely fine. Uh, yeah. So, you know, there's that little bit of conversation with Madame Robert. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, as somebody, one of the guys um, mm-hmm. does not have a name. Welcome to... And Drew runs games. Um, <laughs> yes, the nameless NPCs are not useful. Call him Malcolm. Yeah, Malcolm. Sure, I'll add him to Conca. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, Malcolm. Malcolm uh, the groom. Well, he's probably one of the guys who works it still because I don't think they actually have a stable here. But yeah, okay. um, you know, goes in, puts up uh, realist stuff, and makes sure the horse is ready, which you know probably puts the, the saddle on, you know, all that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, and Rilla is kind of drawing back. Um, over at the bar, Jules is probably getting the same kind of like, yeah, my investigation time is kind of wearing down. Um, mm. So is also looking at, you know, he's, you know, finishing his drink and is making a lot of those um, probably overly dramatic you know, I'm done here, you know, signal the waiter kind of thing, though he's probably paying drink by drink. Um, but, or well, oh, Mortimer, work. Mortimer probably actually has a tab open if I think about it. But yeah, uh, it looks like the two assistants at least are, you know, yeah, we're probably going to get out of here. Um, Cloak probably stepping back from the door. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so as, you know, Rilla does come out, you know, Two minutes later, uh, passing mm-hmm. by and, you know, sees you, recognizes you and kind of nods um, and mm-hmm. just, you know, heading towards her horse. horse but. Mm-hmm. Cloak will approach the horse. Oh, OK. You're going to do that whole like hold the horse while she mounts kind of thing. Yes, exactly. Perfect. Be polite. Okay. <laughs> He's uh, aware of decorum. Right. And that's that's kind of the vibe I was getting. Uh, yeah, so that's yeah. like the, he's he's willing to be chivalrous when it does not demean. Right. Sure. And it's the same um, kind of thing of like, you hope you open a door for everybody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So she, you know, kind of looks at you and, you know, mounts up and, you know, thank you. But I imagine mm-hmm. you hold on to the, the, the reins for a minute or so. Yeah, absolutely. And mm-hmm. I will offer my hand up if she takes oh, yeah. that. Definitely like taken aback by my, oh, yes, thank you. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, mounts up and immediately starts checking her bags. Uh, and enough. making sure that Malcolm has brought all her stuff out and mm-hmm. like, lifting the saddlebag flap and looking in and like touching all of the various papers and looks a little bit relieved. Um, okay. You were uh, Jean-Paul, right? And she's, yes. she's she's speaking in French. It's it's Ooh, rough, okay. but, mm-hmm. um, you know, yeah. she's she had, she's at least conversational. Making an attempt. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He says to her... Um, um oh you speak french uh, um, we can speak in my broken english if you would prefer i i think she actually grins she's like no this is this is a good chance for me to practice especially if we will be seeing a lot of madame Brobert. practice is good in all things you must have plenty of time to practice traveling with mortimer actually you know what cloak cloak isn't disrespectful He's forceful. So he'd say with Mr. Bethune. Uh, practice what? I don't know what you do. I'm just assuming you have a purpose here. And you have a means by which you use your time. I do. Uh, you know, again, lo- <laughs> looking looking at the, the saddlebags and stuff. And it, 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 based on context she he's asking what she does uh no not exactly he's okay. making conversation he's going to ask what she does after he figures out from no nature so i'm oh, gonna okay. cast that absolutely cool let's go real quick let's get spell roll oh wait no spell template sorry 
Right. Uh, these the two reach have right. two. Gnosis one. Two. Cast that. Praxis. Don't need to increase my potency or duration or scale. Bonus from Yantra one. Other sources. Gonna spend willpower. So this is gonna be a roll of eight. Yep. Or seven, sorry. Seven dice. Oh yeah, there we go. And this is your Praxis. Yep. And uh oh, Yeah, okay, well, give me that will um, back. Real quick, um is Theo yeah. still outside get uh, catching her breath? Yep. Okay. I would have like nodded is cool man, but... Right, and probably off to the side so they're having a you know private conversation, yeah. whatever. But yes. Give me that mana back. Absolutely. Um or the and a condition. But, did you spend mana? Oh, no, I didn't. I don't get mana back. I'm going to take right. a condition. I spent okay. one mana last session. Sorry, forgot that they don't double up. Right. You get one willpower, um, which puts me willpower net zero from the spell, and then I will take a condition, but you can resolve that in a moment if you like. Sure. Uh, yeah, and the, the quick note is, Theo, you are out taking a break, and there was that signature Nimbus inside, that thing on that flute, and then that all of a sudden, here it is again, well... The, the the peripheral mage site again um mm. right next to you well no sense of uh distance or location but again it's happening because theo doesn't have uh her active mage site up right so she wouldn't mm -hmm. witness the immediate nimbus uh well yeah actually I, that is going to be a question because you had turned it on you saw mm -hmm. the flute um and then would you have turned it off immediately after while walking outside um or kept it on yeah it's too minute. it's too wonky when it's on so she wouldn't have kept it up unless okay yeah there's something else going on. uh yeah that minus two is, is a big one. okay cool uh mm -hmm. and then as for your condition um hmm. <laughs> um lean into empathy i think mm. okay and have a have a plus That's two what to you empathy offer before and you gave me persuasion before. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I will vary it up a lot. Okay, um, gotcha. Just because each time, you know, isn't necessarily the same thing. It's magic, right? Uh, but yes, yeah, definitely sure. an exceptional success um, and no additional potency. Um, the reach was for instance and. Yep. And aspirations and and uh, obsessions. And obsessions. Okay. Yeah. Vice virtue, aspirations and obsessions, and then total mental social dots. No specific numbers. Right. Do, do. All right. Um, that's the sound I make when I pull up a character in Conca. Yeah. All right. Of course, she doesn't have any attributes currently listed, so we're going to edit in here. Um, her virtue. Hmm. What is her virtue? Quick chat. What's her virtue? I'm joking. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to find my handy list of virtues and vices. Oh yeah, she is generous. Mm. Um, but her vice is pessimistic. All right, excellent. This is mine. Uh, dun -dun. I muted myself. It's also my vice. <laughs> oh yeah, makes sense. <laughs> it's like considering it, yeah. Considering where she's coming from. Um, all right. Uh, so there's that. There's that. Um, oh, how many dots in mental and social? Um, mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, 12. 12. All right, cool. Um, and then also determine aspirations and obsessions. Oh boy. You know, I love this spell, uh, especially as a player, but as mm -hmm. a, uh, as a storyteller, <laughs> it's like, come on, man. Uh, well, gives you an opportunity to flesh out the characters that we consider important. Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Make full character sheets for every NPC. Yeah. <laughs> it's like naming uh, NPCs, you know, 
You're definitely not getting uh, beats. Um, I ain't cracking that. When they need to, when they need to progress, they just do. Uh, uh, no, it's just one to five in a night. Uh, funny that you would add. No, uh, no, no obsessions for her. Okay. Cool. Uh, but uh, aspirations. Uh, let's see. Uh, prove herself to Mister Bethune. Hmm. Uh, is that how she thinks of him? Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely does not think of him as Mortimer. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see here. Uh, uh, oh, yes. Be the first woman accepted into the Royal Society. Ooh, okay. Um, history nerds. If there's other women who have uh, arrived in the his- in the Royal Society in 1846. No, they haven't. Don't, don't uh, tell us. <laughs> and, uh, um and uh third aspiration doop 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 um oh man cloak's gonna help her with that (laughs) (laughs) Uh, she should be able to do it on her own i mean uh cloak sees that as uh this is a good way to get an ally um yeah, we're going to lean into it because I know chat will eventually do this. Oh, Morty, notice me. No, um, chat, you're the worst. Uh, no, uh, this is this is pretty, pretty simple. Uh, have a whirlwind Western romance. Yes. Um, yeah. Which from your aspiration it definitely yeah. like she is she is looking for because we're, we're you know prior to harlequin novels and you know torn mm. shirts and you know all that kind of stuff but you know the idea of out here on the frontier you know uh and and notably um the yes. the, the big emphasis here is not quite one night stand kind of vibe mm-hmm. but you know meet a man or woman you don't know that um and Doesn't you know have, have that have that connection and then oh and they have to go separate ways and, and i feel there there is a bit of um especially mm. considering her vice there's probably a a, a a tragedy little drop on there of oh, knowing man. that it's likely to be short term she'll have to return oh. back to london etc oh man i i really wish i had put in the other things i had written for sanite coulange so that you would have seen it. <laughs> I'm definitely I'm shipping them right now. I'm definitely updated. First mm-hmm. female fellows were in 1945. Mm. See? Okay. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. In, in, hi, real history. It sucks. Uh, cool. Alrighty. So, yes, that, that little touch. Um, yep. And all of a sudden, that flow of uh information theo going Mm -hmm. the fuck was that so i get that information from her note that she wants to prove herself to mr bethune and then cloak thinks that he can say something about that even though he's as subtle as a sledgehammer he can still make he can he can pull it off that it won't seem peculiar for him to say this so um he talked about purpose and she was kind of thrown 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 back when he said that kind of bluntly so he says um I presume that Mr. Bethune brought you here for a reason, to help him with whatever he intends to do. Yeah, I think she gives like that that kind of chagrin, the like you're making her a bigger deal than she is. Mm. Uh, and uh, no, I'm not really much help so much as a glorified secretary. Mm -hmm. So Cloak pauses and says, in my experience, the person who knows all the details and has all the knowledge about what has transpired is the one with the true power. I think, yeah, she doesn't even come at that directly. She, you know, kind of lays it off. And I don't know everything. I just, I just basically 
clean up his notes. Okay. Well, I will say this. As a person in a cloak, kind of like, you know, like uh, it looks absentmindedly, like strokes the scars on his face. As a person who's gone through struggle uh, and recognized his own limitations, I will remind you that you should never let someone tell you your worth. If you want to be just a glorified secretary, you can choose that. If you want to be more, perhaps ascend to the same status as Mr. Bethune. It is your choice and it is your duty. If you'd like to talk more about that, I think that there are insights you could learn from observing how Haitian maroons engage their work in a silver mine. And Cloak then tries to be really polite. He's going to try and make a persuasion um, test here um, and says, I would be happy to host you at your convenience. Cool. Um, yeah, that went from one roll in my head to a different one. Um, I think we can kind of smash them together. Uh, cool. Okay, Whoa. sorry. <laughs> Y'all good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Having fun. Surprises for us. Phase out for a moment. Right. <laughs> um, so um, we went from uh, basically trying to disarm her because you were a little bit forward. Um, mm -hmm. especially yeah, totally. He's always forward. Right. Um, but especially the like, you know, elevate yourself to, you know, Mr. Bethune's level that I mean, tying in on her aspirations there. Um, I think we're going to. Uh, well, what, what were you thinking of rolling? Let's start there. I think I was thinking of rolling presence plus persuasion. Or expression, you know, he's inclined to use expression, but I think persuasion would make more sense considering he's trying to um, persuade her that there are two things he's trying to persuade her of, that she's responsible for her destiny, but that could be a longer term thing, right? Like mm -hmm. um, social maneuvering and stuff. But the most important thing is that um, it might be a good idea to take him up on his offer at some point in the future and be hosted at the mine to just be like, hear what he has to say. Sure. Um, and that's that's kind of what I'm I'm more leaning in on of the, the cool. well what is what are they because the the whole like oh are you guys up to something what's you know, is there something in the mind and yeah mm -hmm. it, tick the you know curiosity the cure the 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 scientist uh studier researcher underlying what you know what she has um and so yeah i think i i think i'm good with uh presence plus persuasion um cool. and the like resolve or composure i think we're just going to nullify that just because you're tying in and tapping on that aspiration of going hey hey here's this thing that's like oh hey what <laughs> all right fantastic i'm going to apply uh the condition I still have for mm -hmm. my first exceptional success last session for a plus two to persuasion. So I can, um, uh, what's the word for it? When you complete a, not complete condition, you can resolve, resolve. resolve thank you. I don't know why I couldn't remember that word. Um, when you, I so I want to resolve the condition. Absolutely. For an arcane beat. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to roll present persuasion seven dice. Right. Get the roll on the sheet. Normal roll. Presence. Do. Persuasion. And click. There we go. Ooh, yeah. Cool. Four successes. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, she goes from, I think, her expression basically shifts from, like, who are you to be, you know, so forward with her and, you know, telling her what she should or shouldn't do? You know, you're a complete stranger to her to, mm -hmm. huh, okay, wait, hang on. What's this about a mine? And, uh, you know, and the fact that is you are a very unique individual uh, compared to who all she's met. Uh, mm -hmm. And so she kind of nods and like, far from surreptitiously, just kind of, you know, 
takes the reins of the horse and kind of readies herself. And she nods. She says, if I find that uh, Mr. Bethune has a day where he does not uh, need my assistance and I'm caught up with my work, perhaps I will. It will be my pleasure at your convenience. And yeah, I there, I don't think there's a goodbye or anything. She just, you know, a nod and, you know, kind of turn the horse away. Goodbye. Yeah, that's true. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, you know, rides up as, you know, the sun is definitely starting to set the the pathway up to uh, the estate itself is a little bit, you know, iffy to see. But the estate itself um, is becoming uh, pretty obvious to see because there are definitely a lot of lights on, probably a light in every window. It's it's a little bit of a showy thing for the, you know, for Mr. Enright. Uh, just like, oh, yeah, turns and all lit up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and probably, you know, it's probably got a gate with lanterns hanging from it and stuff like that yeah uh so yes theo you watch as they have this conversation in french which i don't believe is one of your nope yeah it's just like ah they're speaking in french yes well theo speaks spanish so she would understand the roots of some of the stuff right maybe a very general guess of or just the conversation. Yep. but more importantly she would have seen that spell walk right would have felt the spell, but without the active mage site, not actually see it coming from, and just they're having a conversation, and then all of a sudden, oh hey, there's that, those, oh those, those wordless whispers. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, that's not directional or anything. She just knows something's Correct. happening nearby, so she mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily know. And there's nothing overt about Uncle casting that spell, right? So no, because the um. Uh, the yon actually, what is the yantra that you would have used? My son. Oh, right. Just having that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The best part is she's riding away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. That's it. Cool. So, uh, yeah, I think at, you know, well, actually, well, since, since Cloak is kind of the, the primary actor here for a moment, uh, do you head back into the tavern? Yeah, I would. Uh, actually, is if Theodosia is still outside, mm -hmm. uh, Cloak would engage Theodosia. Sure. Because I imagine that they haven't had a lot of opportunities to talk at this point. He's been reluctant. You know, it's finally he's in, trying to ingratiate himself with the whole town, right? He's made specific choices, and now he's trying to be a, a citizen of the society there. Yep. And so, I mean, the two of you, the two of you are the outsiders. Exactly. Yep. Um. So, uh, Cloak walks up to Theodosia. And says, Madame. Um, would you know his title? Um, hmm. like, would he be Hoongong Cloak to her? Or, I mean, I, uh, in my head, not... I imagine most everybody in town knows him as Jean Paul. Yeah. Jean -Paul. Uh, you probably wouldn't refer to him that way unless okay. you were initiated in Vodou or you had some reason to appreciate Vodou, right? right? If that became clear to you and, and you did that. He would be surprised, and then he might feel particularly respected. So he doesn't really discuss Vodou with yeah. So most. yeah, Theo wouldn't necessarily know about that. So she would just mm -hmm. nod, and say Jean Paul, or what's his last name? Uh, his Broussard. full name is Jean Paul Pierre Joseph Broussard. So, so if you say Monsieur uh, Broussard, Broussard, if you want, mm -hmm. yeah, Mr. Broussard. Mm -hmm. Which actually, quick says, reminder: what is yeah. everybody's ages? Hmm. Jean Paul is in his early thirties, like mid twenties. I think Theo is somewhere about that too, mid early twenties. Yeah, twenty five, mid twenties. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So Jean Paul is specifically Nike. old enough to have experienced some of the, um, the continued servitude in Haiti mm -hmm. as they were trying to stabilize the government, um, but not old enough that he would have been a slave before emancipation right before cool. independence i mean yeah i would just had this yes. moment of ages across the group specifically isabel was born at the tail end of the mexican revolution oh, which was right. 1821 mm -hmm. so like 25, 25. cool and 25, uh, gisela is 19 if i remember correctly yep. mm -hmm. baby an actual child <laughs> <laughs> cool. okay sorry back, back to the conversation no big deal. Uh, so Cloak says ever bluntly, um, why are you standing outside? Just catching my breath. Just doing mm. a little dancing. Hmm. With Isabel on the feet. 
Mm, that must have been beautiful to hear and see. <clears throat> I I know you don't hang around the saloon often. But I do not like alcohol. There's many things there to treat the senses besides alcohol, such as music and dancing. Hmm. Fair enough. I just want to we both kind of orbit around this town. I'm sure you have scars that I can't see. <laughs> Sledge hammer. I love truer than love, you know. <laughs> I love the yeah. like normal conversation expectations, and then cloaks just like bah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like just really bizarre things to say. Right. Yeah, that's right. He's blunt. Mm. He doesn't actually have a lot of empathy. He has a lot of insight into people's experiences, and he just assumes that people have gone through bad things. So. No, like, yeah, you're not particularly rude. It's just yeah. that's <laughs> it's a really great. weird thing to ask someone. <laughs> yeah. But it's not even ask. It's just a statement. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, but when you do say that, you like she just sort of reflexively, like you know, um, has a like you have no idea look on her face. Um, mm -hmm. I, I notice you folks seem to be putting down roots here. Are you guys planning on sticking around? Well, if we were to go east we would be enslaved promptly. If we were to go west, maybe the same thing would happen. The fact that we have not yet had to tussle with the, the United States government is because we are in a forlorn place in the west. We will be here as long as we can. And if we need to leave, we will. But for the time being, this is the home we did not choose. You didn't choose to come here? No. There's a lot of you for it to be an accident. How do you think the 30 Haitians would get to this place? I assume through a long and arduous journey. Hmm. Well, that is a insightful way to describe it. <laughs> I get the feeling we're not talking about the same thing. So Cloak is gonna, let's see, I'm trying to think if he's trying to conceal his feelings. I think, oh, this is the same scene. You can't resolve more than one condition in a scene. Damn it. Um, <laughs> I'll wait. Yep, I'll wait. Um, <laughs> so, so he says, uh, uh, we are talking about the same thing. I'm just talking about it in different ways because I don't want to tell you the truth. <laughs> Sledge hammer. I appreciate your candor. And I don't mean to pry. No Imagine both of you are having this conversation in broken English now that I'm thinking about it. Cloak also speaks Spanish. Oh, okay. Cool. Oh, I... Which would probably be easier for him. Mm -hmm. Well, it would have been easier for Theo, too. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not... Uh, I am one to respect people's boundaries. Forgive me if I was crying. No forgiveness necessary. No apology needed. Boundaries are figments. They can protect us. They can also hold us down. True. We allow chains to wrap us and anchor us to places that we were before and prevent us from going to places we should be in the future. I just state my feelings openly because I am not good at doing it any other way. Can I show up? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Isabel like pops out the front door with mm -hmm. uh, two glasses of whiskey in her hand. Oh, right. um, and like <laughs> boisterous as fuck. It's like Theo, 
How long does it take to catch your breath, girl? You weren't dancing that well. <laughs> uh, and then, like, is like in the middle of like turning the corner to like, like, hey, you know, a shot before we go back in. Otherwise, yeah. I'm and like she's in the middle of like, like halfway through the sentence of, like, if you want me to earn all the tips tonight, that's fine. But <laughs> and then like stops and it's like everything okay? Yes. Everything's fine. We were just discussing the fact that we have pain in common in our past. <laughs> I, I his voice was like, Isabel like, keeps her composure. Chris wants to go. Cheers, I'll drink to that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and Theo, like, the look at Theo's face is like, I didn't think that's what we were talking about. But okay. <laughs> um, uh, do you know each other? Hmm. I've seen her around. Uh, so Cloak, Cloak would say, let's see, what title would Isabel go by? What honorific? Probably Senora, if any. Would she go by Senora? Yeah. I mean, would she go by Doña, considering her nah, cause she bailed noble on experience? That. Oh, she's, a, she's abdicated that completely? Like, nobody knows about that at all? Okay, cool. Then, then um, Cloak would say Senora. Buenas noches. When I was actually like, Theo was preparing to introduce if you guys didn't know. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go yeah. right ahead. I apologize. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Apologize. Um, so, uh, Monsieur Broussard, what's uh, uh, here? Or Isabel Zassi? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Munoz y Pilar, but it'd just be Pilar. Uh, Senor Pilar. Senor Pilar. And he would I, say, Encantado. <laughs> She's the uh, artist of the flute that I was watching. Ah, uh, the one who distracts the alcoholics from their cups. Partially, I'd say also... I entertain them and provide them with a escape from the darkness that plagues their lives in more ways than one. Tell sure, me more. The, this tavern isn't all about drinking. This is also yeah. a social hub for the entire town. Like there are people the that come social here that, hub, right? Yeah, there are people that come here that don't drink. There come people that are here to socialize and to see each other and be seen. Hmm. And sometimes they come just for entertainment, to be, um, to enjoy the pleasure of a song while sung or music well played. And I will uh, believe you. Uh, Thank you. A uh, uh, thing I think we should point out, and y'all can feel free to correct me, uh, especially you history nerds. Most everybody probably drinks beer because drinking water is kind of an iffy proposition. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of beer, and then there's some like some spirits, right? And as we've established, there's you know you put there whiskey is brought out to the west, um, and we've established that Warner and Wright has made us establish a gin still out back. Mm, right. That's but right. other than that, yeah, most people are drinking beer and then yeah. maybe an occasional shipment of wine to put on a you know a fancy uh front for yeah. well and specifically i, I think mean, people even, are still drinking small beer up until that point right right and when and, and yeah tea drinking also uh but yeah um uh, specifically just because of like people don't drink water normally like even at home like it's kind of iffy Unless I'm mm. completely off, because uh, it's usually you know, no, water. Yeah, still pretty. I think people drink cold water. Yeah, yeah, you'd have your wells. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The wells. Very good point. Yep. Anyways. But you're not like hydrating. Mm -hmm. A so, lot and whatnot. Clo Cloak would say, "I should state what I mean differently." Uh. I think it is good for there to be a distraction from uh, indulgence and obsession because it can lead to people being violent when that is not good for them or others. I appreciate you for telling me that this is a place where good things can happen and where people can come together. Because I think for my sake and the sake of the Maroons who I care for, people need to know us. 
as you two are trying to know me now, and I you. Um, Theo's kind of parsing that. <laughs> it's not quite sure yeah, how it's, to a, it's definitely a little above above uh, Isabel's head. Not that she's like she just doesn't normally think on that level, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, so it's more distract- instincts and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean that makes all sense, mm-hmm. I guess. So to distract from the silence, she'll reach out for that glass that Isabel's holding. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> um, you don't mind if I then looks to and tosses it back. All right, you're ready for another song, I suppose. Something like that. All right. Cloak says, "Thank you both for talking to me," and he reaches out his hands. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Nice to finally speak with you. Uh, we're sorry. All right. <laughs> Two <It's cells>. time. <laughs> uh, Cass and no nature. There's going to be some paradox here. Mm-hmm. Increase scale. Yep. Exactly. So I need three reach. Or just take a minus two. two. What do you say? Or just take a minus two to your roll. Two oh, yeah, that's true. Um, nah. We're going to spin that. <laughs> Push that paradox. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's fine. You said you are going to spin the, par- uh, the mana? Yeah. Okay, so it'll just be a chance die. Penalties cool. increase potency. You don't need that. Duration. Penalties increase scale. Nope. That's Bones not a thing. Mantra. One. What? What is nothing? Oh, you uh, just. Roll 1D110. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Oh, yeah. That's great. So I have a dramatic yes. failure on the paradox. Roll. Yes. Give me that. What is that? That's a good result. I'm trying to remember what it is. Go pull ahead and do your thingy. I'll pull it out. Figure right, out what cool. it is. It's, uh, yeah, it's a good thing. It's a real good thing. Generate one less paradox the next time in the scene. Something like that. You might get a condition. Uh, I can't remember what it is. No, you, you don't generate paradox and you get a uh, willpower back. Cool. That's right. Awesome. Give me that willpower before. Cool. Spin the mana. Yep. Cool. Then, um, where's my spell roll? Spell roll's right there. Calculated dice pool seven. Mm-hmm. I'm of course gonna spend a willpower. Mm-hmm. Yep. And two successes, not a exceptional. Nope. But I succeed. And so immediately your guys' peripheral yep. mage side goes up probably and, and you know, feel free to correct me, Ralph, but as soon as they touch your hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. We'll, I think we can resolve Ralph's spell first, but there's definitely going to be some other stuff going on immediately. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Uh, All right. And um, I'm trying does to remember. A, does did they only a, uh, experience immediate nimbus? Right. Really? Yeah. Nope. Yeah. There's yeah. no resist for it? Huh. Nope. No, no, nature is, no nature is very good about that. Um, yeah, it's just knowledge. Yeah. Now, mental scan where you're actually trying mm-hmm. to pick up thoughts, that has yes, the, exactly. the withstand of composure. But just to understand somebody's virtue and vice, which again, to remind folks at home, virtue and vice is not D&D alignment. It doesn't tell you that somebody right. is generous and is pessimistic. It's just when they're really being the best they are, they're generous. When they fall back on their failings, they're pessimistic. It is not an alignment. And then aspirations and obsessions obviously comes from uh, uh, the reach. Yep. So... Uh, but yes, uh, because the spell was successfully cast, um, uh, Craig, because uh, it looks like Chris is looking something up. Uh, Craig, if you'll go ahead and share your vice, virtue, and the total number of mental and social dots that you have, as well as your aspirations and <gasps> obsession. All right. Um, her virtue is generosity. Ooh. Her vice is pride. Mm. Uh, mental and social. It'll be a sum to uh, 16. Oh, cool. So more than Mortimer. Mm-hmm. Her short term habit. Mortimer had 16. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. And uh, aspirations and obsessions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, the short-term aspiration is decide if she's going to stay or move on. Mm. Uh, she has another short-term aspiration to set up um, or to meet with uh, Gisela mm-hmm. to discuss what happened. Ooh. Uh, she has a long-term aspiration. Does that cover well as well? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To help uh, her daughter find her voice. Ooh. And your obsession, which is her probably obsession. the thing that is going to make Coco the fuck is uh, learning more about her limits. Oh. Right. Which, uh, and we will, we will talk oh, about... Oh, man. We will talk about what... Cloak... Everyone's coming to the mine. Oh, yes. Uh, We're all we, going in the dark. We will talk uh, about the difference that Cloak feels between aspiration and obsession here in a minute. Uh, Chris, cool. were you looking Sounds something good. up? Uh, I was trying to see if I'd ever written down what I was going to change my virtue to. I don't remember what we had um, to come up with. We had uh, we had talked about. And we shortened it to Reverend, and then I don't remember what we talked about changing it to. Um, and this is, of course, not something that I'm we like did kicking in. myself, right? Because remember, we had the because it was just a voice chat. Mm-hmm. Um, Environmentally respectful, or something like mm, that. No, no, it was. No. We moved away from that and went to something oh, that's okay. more broadly accessible. Um, sense. Shoot, um, we'll we'll we'll, we'll, leave we'll it figure it out later. But yes, because fortunately, um, rolling for someone towards somebody's virtue actually doesn't get you anything. Now, rolling uh, towards their vice, flies, is, vice is manipulative. Ooh, um, I I have out, I have a lot of out of character aspirations, right? Mm-hmm. Um. So I did have one that was, which I ticked off, uh, mm-hmm. was cast a spell in front of one of the other mages. Mm-hmm. Um, I think between that and my long term uh, aspiration um, would just be, it, they would kind of sum up as find others like me. Mm-hmm. Oh, because my long term actual written down thing is formalize a cabal or order with the other mages. Yeah. Um. Uh, the other short term is take something using my wits. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the obsession is establish myself as part of a spirit court. Mm. <laughs> Which probably translates oh. real weird and Ungan Dang. Cloak's head. Um, awesome. Uh, yeah. And then Theo's casting a spell. So we'll, we'll come to that. Uh, the one mm. thing I want to know and to, to kind of flavor it, obviously, um, is as... Uh, Cloak looks at these chains, right? We've discussed that the, the no nature, yeah. he sees them as these chains that yeah. they are, you know, these things that are pulling and tugging and stuff like that. But in my head, and feel free to play with this, that obsession chain looks less like a chain. And while it's still this connection to them, um, I feel like it's the rope reaching into the well kind of thing the thing that they're pulling on to pull themselves out and away uh-huh. from the things that are holding them down it's uh-huh. definitely something that is you know it's tied around their waist it's still tugging on them and pulling yeah. them but it feels like it's drawing them up out of the mire so to speak okay. um, and kind of leaning on cloaks like freedom and you know saving yourself and yeah. ascending like this is the thing that they're using to pull out now it may not be a thing that you know, Cloak necessarily agrees with or, you know, can commiserate with, but at least yeah. this is the thing that as opposed to everybody else, you know, especially as a Mastigos, all these things that are holding people down and they're happy with their chains and meanwhile, these two for whatever reason look like they're trying to pull themselves away from their chains or oh, dragging oh. their chains with them, you know, yeah, kind of thing. Um, and I guess before we even have your reaction, uh, because Craig is only using one Yantra, so this will happen immediately yeah. after. Can uh, I confirm one thing? I have a question about that. Can I use um, Cloak as a as an, a Yantra for this spell? No. Okay. Uh, oh, actually, I take that back. Are you casting on Cloak? Mm-hmm. Well, Cloak, Cloak is part of the advanced scale that I'm using. Um, no, because sympathetic casting would be using something that represents them, not the subject themselves. Um, okay. So uh, if, if you need to think on that for a minute, feel free. What was that, Rafi? It's a quick question. Yeah. Um, 
I know that people witness somebody's immediate nimbus when they're in sensory range if they have active mage sight on. However, if you are a mage and someone casts a spell on you, do you experience the immediate nimbus? I do not think so. I don't so. remember. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember. That was like an area of the rules I wasn't able to figure. I haven't, still haven't been able to figure out for a while. So No, unless you actually have your eyes open for it okay. or you intentionally flare it. Yep. Gotcha. Cool. Sounds good. All right. So... Um... As she's holding one hand, her other hand is going to slip into her pocket, and she's going to she has a lead coin in her pocket. Cool. And she'll use that as her yonder. Sure, I like it. And Sounds what are you good. casting, real quick? I am casting soul marks. Sure. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. So episode two, we're going to figure everybody out. Well, so much for my yeah. long term. Oh, you guys are going to dance around <laughs> each other. Now, nah, fuck it. We're going to do in two episodes. We're too curious. Everybody's throwing <laughs> so, uh, spells all over the place. It's going to happen. Cloak wants to know everyone's nature. <laughs> um. So I added two for pot- or four, two potency minus four. Mm-hmm. So I think that's three dice with a one uh, Three, yeah. Mm-hmm. And th- uh, just to be clear, on- oh, come on, baby, perfect. yeah. Um, and yeah, never mind. I don't care anymore. Um, I was going to ask what the reach was, but yeah, <laughs> instant as uh, was one. Instant so. cast and uh, advanced oh, advanced scale. scale, right? Okay. Yep. Um, I will take um, a dramatic failure. <laughs> Ooh. Right. Uh Chris, go ahead. What were you asking? I was going to just narrate my reaction, but oh, heck cool. yeah. go ahead with Craig's stuff. Yeah. Um so obviously yeah, the spell do does not work. Um and the the condition. Um I'm gonna put this at a um actually Similar to, but not quite the same, uh, to Cloak's open book condition. Um, I think the soul marks, I think uh, Theo is kind of nudged into, like, when people ask or trying to understand her, um, similar, the, the new frustration that you have of not being able to see these soul marks and you are drawn into revealing and helping people understand Theo. And so kind of in, in a way showing her soul marks. Now, of course, this is a condition, so you can do it at your leisure. But yeah, somebody is trying to understand Theo rather than necessarily being guarded or secretive, you know, uh, clear the condition to uh, resolve the condition to kind of help them understand you. Okay. So, Chris, yes, uh, the reaction there. Yeah, I think there's going to be a Spider-Man moment. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I have the idea of of uh, Isabel rolling up a mask, but it, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I don't... I think Isabel tries to... I think she has a good feeling about what just happened. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I don't think she investigates it at this moment. Okay. Touches hands, um, has that tingly feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, specifically because I know, like I know that I have to touch things or have to push to do them, mm-hmm. uh, to not touch things to cast on them. Um, so yeah, it's just a, um, it's that bit of composure, and um, uh, I am going to kind of double back on the convincing um, uh, Jean Paul to come around and to bring some of his folks around that they'd be welcome here. Mm -hmm. Um, And, um, you know, speaking sort of more loftily than she has before. um, um, Talking about like actually bringing the community together and improving as a, as a, uh, as a town uh, and whatnot. Uh, That's what she thinks Mm -hmm. that he wants to hear. Right. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm leaning on my sympathetic merit. Okay. Mm. Which you could remind um, everybody at home what it does. That is, uh, if I, um, in a social action, try to open a door um, with uh, someone, I can oh, right. take, take on a condition... Off. Um, or sorry, at the beginning of a social maneuvering attempt, you may choose to accept a condition such as leverage, swooning, or vulnerable in order to immediately eliminate two of the subject's doors. Gotcha. Okay, cool. 
Um, oh boy. Okay, juggling a whole lot of stuff. How are you doing over there, Ash? Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, how do I want to do this? Um, well, real quick, let's define what uh, set of doors you're wanting to open for Cloak. Huh? And then we'll jump over to uh, Cloak's reaction after casting the spell. I think it's um, convincing him to have the Maroons open up to the town a little bit more. Okay. So, yeah, well, cause I, yeah, I wanted to clarify if it was getting the Maroons to come down or seeing the tavern as a more positive thing than he is. So we're, we're more on, hey, no, no, bring, bring your friends right. down. Okay, cool. All right. Which, oh, da 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 da, rolling dice, da 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 da, opening doors. Leveraged is nice. Um, dun dun dun. Um, Chris will be the one I think who picks the condition, I believe. Um, yeah, I know. Okay, I know that's fine. If he wants to be in love with Cloak right now, yeah, that's all. Uh, well, vulnerable. He can choose whatever he wants. Yeah. Um, and while uh Chris is picking that up, we need to determine how many doors. Um. Uh, Cloak has which... Cloak has four default doors because his resolve and composure are both four. Okay. Um, cool, because where is... Uh, that's opening doors. I don't want that. Number of doors, yeah. Yep, is the lower of... Uh, it won't be a breaking point or active hubris. Um, and I don't think it uh, gets in the way of an aspiration or obsession. And it's not against uh, Cloak's virtue. Nope. Okay. Cool. His virtue is protect. Well, his virtue is protective. So, um, let's see. Ralph wants to lean into this mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. uh, you know Ralph wants there to be much more harmony in the town. Sure. Uh, he's quite protective of the maroons. Good. Okay. All right. Cool. Let I think. Just, uh, I think. Um, in like and it's because it's the sympathetic merit right it's it's exposing yep. yourself a little bit more than you normally would mm -hmm. um and i think there's something about the way that isabel talks about this that there's this extra bit of like wistfulness and longing and 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 Cloak probably picks up on that pretty easily. Um, uh, and okay. yeah, we'll go with leveraged. Okay. Well, then you have an idea. There's a there's a there's a lever you could push on for that later. Cool. So, considering Cloak likes to press levers, break chains, uh, it, once that happens, right? Uh, Cloak then looks Isabel in the eyes and says, "Considering you know, I want to role play this, you know, leaning on the the mm -hmm. uh, virtue of protective." He says, "Um." The safety and comfort of the people in my care matter a lot to me. So, if you are willing to come and make the invitation to them yourself, I will endorse it. So we can roll for that. I'm trying to give you an opportunity to resolve leverage if you want. Uh, I mean, we can resolve it later. Okay, cool. Actually, Sounds good. Yeah, that's like, fine. Yeah, because you have to ask a favor of me. I yeah, I know. That's what I meant. Then, then I'll, I'll say it less obliquely. Um, um, please come and ask them yourself. Okay, this will or be one of those yourself. ones that I put my foot down. And I say that is mm -hmm. not a big enough ask to actually oh, okay. resolve the leveraged. Oh, okay, gotcha. Condition. All right. Yeah, this this should be especially because that is I misunderstood. Or, oh no, you're good. Um, this is something already in line with what she's asking. Mm. It feels like it's doubling up a little bit. So we'll Okay, go. fair yeah. enough. It'll it'll be um, more of and, a favor in And pocket. Isabel cool. And not to like cut go you ahead. off or whatever, I'm but done. um I think she very much like says that as a sort of and like ends it with a good night, but Mr. Broussard and like has oh, to okay, fantastic. Work. So you're left with that impression of I can do something with this. Ah, uh, okay. Gotcha. All right, fantastic. Um, right, and so yeah, as Isabel kind of ducks in, um, uh, Theo and Cloaker left there standing for a minute. Mm -hmm. And and like ever since uh Cloak cast a spell, Theo's been like staring at him. 
like as if she's not even aware that she's staring at him. Sure. Gloak says, uh, I know a lot about learning limits. And I think you and I might have things to talk about that have nothing to do with this town. It's fucking sledgehammer. <laughs> and then he says, and I know that Isabel should join that conversation. So mentally in the calculus, Jean Paul's <laughs> name appears on the list. Yep. <laughs> and her notepad. If you yeah. wish, you can come to the mine at sunrise. Or at moonrise. Which on Conca, I can tell you. Because I have the calendar set up. <clears throat> Uh, actually, tomorrow is a full moon. So yeah, oh. moon, moon, moon is actually kind of <laughs> up. <laughs> Kenneth Theus has come to the mind of full moon and tomorrow's. <laughs> um, what if we got to bring Gisela in? Uh, what if I were to convince Isabel to put on a performance with me for your folks to expose them to some of the other things that the saloon can offer? I think that would be good. Also, um, and then Cloak is really leaning here. You know, he's he he knows that now is the time to just put it. But all all the things he knows, all his cards on the table. He says, um, "I might also be able to help you talk to Gisela about whatever happened the other day, this morning. This morning, sorry, whatever happened between you two this morning." Uh, instantly defensive. I was just saying, Craig. Welcome to the spoot condition. Because <laughs> that, is, that is not quite reading somebody's mind, but like how But the it kind of is. Right, yeah. Well, but that was nowhere in her thoughts. Right. Mm -hmm. it, no, I yeah. know, but it's it's the aspiration. And my point yeah, is, yeah, yeah. how do you know this? Yeah, definitely spooked now by Cloak. So she pauses for a minute, weighing whether to reveal that he's right or to just go with it. And after a moment, she says, how could you? possibly know that oh oh this is this is the first time okay um so i'm trying to remember how it's um um oh this is good cloak uh this real um probably the slyest thing you've seen him done yet um a cheshire smile appears on his face for a brief instant and he says vodou <laughs> yeah yeah okay <laughs> I'll talk to Isabel and we'll see if we're there tomorrow. It's up to you. I'm not going anywhere. And your limits won't go anywhere. <laughs> until <laughs> you make the right choice. No, that's not a, it's an actual like judge sledgehammer or like jackhammer now. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, okay, sure. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, no, that's, uh, he. he's not trying to um, prolong the conversation. Mm -hmm. Just... I think that probably is. Seems like the end of the scene. Ah, uh, yeah. Theo would uh, go in and have another quick drink before, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like in a like in a give me a drink sort of way. Right. Cool. Because <clears throat> uh, hi, Ash. <laughs> um, uh, well, but just to very quickly, um, Cloak heads into the tavern to sit, or goes. Okay, I've talked to like a bunch of people, and I'm going to head back. Hmm. I think um, it would probably be, well, hmm. he'll go in. He came here to talk to people. Yeah. He might stay out and see the horses a little bit. That's what right. I do. I'll spend 15, 20 minutes caring for the horses and any dogs that are around and then go and then he'll go in the tavern. Any interaction. Yeah. Kind yeah. of normal chat. Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. So Gisela. Because this mm -hmm. afternoon you done uh, you done the tarot and gone. Oh yes, this stuff is dangerous. <laughs> um, good. I'm going to do something stupid because I liked up how you resolved the spooked condition. Yes. And um, basically, in her head, she's connecting this weird, possibly dangerous stuff with our new out of town guests. Absolutely. Because this all started 
when as they far showed as she up. can tell when they showed up <laughs> um yes. so i know that they are interested in something on that hill mm-hmm. i want to go look at the hill hell yes uh so are, are we uh because i mean it's not a far distance or anything like that but it is gonna head into the night does she pack some bags kind of stuff or does she just like close on her back let's go find out what's going on you know take a candle, uh, yeah maybe. i was gonna ask how far it is like should i take a horse it's, or can i walk it, there in a reasonable yeah, it's distance like a two three mile walk so it's 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 shitty to do all the time um mm. but like you know like for the binders for instance they're they're up there they walk down to the tavern and then you know hours later they walk back up and like okay good enough um so you know it's it's a it's a small trek but it's not like arduous you need the you need a horse kind of thing yeah okay in that case yeah i'm just gonna start going like i'm trying to think of what supplies i might take to go investigate a hill but like probably probably some of the various occult uh stuff that she's collected yeah. the hag stuff, little, little bits and bobs that i've got for investigating warding off spirits whatever yeah. you know uh hedge wizard hedge magic kind of vibe cool yeah. um so yeah uh you know like i said three miles so it's not a terribly long walk uh, mm-hmm. especially you know frontier town you know, kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, we walk everywhere anyways. Um, uh, but yes, you get to the top and thank you, chat. No, it is not a terrible time to find out that the hills are alive. Um, either with <laughs> the movie with music? or with music. Um, but uh, yeah, you uh, make your way up to that particular ridge line because, you know, mm-hmm. you pointed at a, a hilltop of where yeah. exactly is kind of you know, vague. Um, and yeah, look around and, you know, Sun is starting to set by the time you probably get up there and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But you've got enough light to work with. And of course, it's going to be a full it's moon. It's almost and, a full moon. Yeah, we can see. we don't have light pollution. Um, yeah. So a full mm-hmm. moon Honestly, is yeah, pretty you can see fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but yeah, initial like glance. Like, yeah, there's nothing up here. You're up above the mine. You can kind of look mm-hmm. down and see where stuff is working. You know, where dad works, you know, kind of stuff. You're familiar with the mines, but... Uh, you are definitely up higher on top of it. Okay. Um, I want to turn on Mage Sight in the ground, see if I can find anything with this. Sure. Uh, yeah, so initially, uh, with Fate and Time, um, yeah, actually with Fate and Time, nothing seems out of the ordinary. You don't see anything bizarre. But as... Hmm. I have... The Merit Eye for the Strange. Mm. Aha. Uh, well, Which, it's, go ahead. You it. got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, roll intelligence and composure to identify evidence of supernatural involvement. Gotcha. Right. Uh, which is more for like an after the fact. Yeah, like if thing? I find a problem investigating it. But Right. Um, that said, um, go ahead and because this is what she's up there for. So go mm-hmm. ahead and roll it. Uh, and, and composure. And I will get the willpower. I will find five successes. It. Oh yeah! Awesome. Okay, so exceptional success. Get that condition. There's oh you know, yeah, that's actually true. Um, we can talk about it right now. Um, it is a intelligence plus composure, so it doesn't have a particular skill tied to it. But um, you can apply a condition either to yourself or um, well, yeah, I guess really you can't apply it to the area. Um, uh, well, actually, I guess I could. Well, no, that would be dumb. Yeah, you can apply it to yourself. Uh, I think this case, uh, informed, mm-hmm. kind of makes sense. Um, and I imagine, especially putting the willpower into it and considering the background of what's going on, uh, and go ahead and mark off spoot, because I... Yeah. You're, yeah. Um, at this point, you went from spooked to I know everything about this absolutely barren hilltop. Uh, Mm -hmm. there's, there's grass growing here. There's, you know, some rocky terrain. 
and you go over it, fine tooth comb, sun sets, moon is coming up and it's a little harder to see, but again, it's nearly a full moon. So you're not about to roll your ankle or anything like that and going through and there is nothing significant up here, uh, at least as far as you are aware, you know, nothing has happened. So they're not here investigating something that's already it's happened. here. Yeah. Right. Um, but considering your mage sign, considering the exceptional success, uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a, a little gimme here. And you don't know what. Uh, and I'm not going to let you roll a spell to figure out what. But there is a definite, like, this is a significant place, though. Uh, and because then let me jump back over here to matter uh, to fate. Um, yeah. Uh, it reveals the presence and use of a destiny, but not the details of that destiny. This place doesn't have a destiny capital D, um, but it definitely is like there. There's a purpose. There's there's something significant about this space. But what it exactly is. You're not sure, and it very clearly hasn't happened yet. There's mm -hmm. nothing to investigate that has happened, you know, especially with mm. time. You know, um, it's like, huh, there is something here. And it, going beyond just like, oh, yes, you know, more Bethune says, oh, yeah, I'm going up there. Um, and the one thing, the other thing I will mention, just as a kind of reminder, is he was setting up telescopic survey stuff yeah. from up here. So, yeah, it is definitely like, hmm, well, I've gone over the ground here and wonderfully, the yeah. moon has risen and you can look up at the stars and go, huh. OK. But, um, can I cast serendipity? Absolutely. Um, Mage, Grant's Mage will try a glimpse of all the potential roads your destiny may follow. As you identify the next step you must take to accomplish a stated objective. My objective is I want to know, I guess, to find out why this is important. It's a pretty good goal. Sure. Um, and are you taking the reach um, options? Uh, that first reach one specifically is very, very good. The second mm -hmm. one is way good, but obviously costs a lot of reach. Yeah, so if I do it with just one reach, I need one for instance. Is that the only other reach I need? Do that plus one? Uh, correct, because you, um, yeah. Because it, it's do. basically just a, you know a thing now. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the, the biggest difference is for the duration of the spell. Uh, oh, wait, okay. Actually, yes, because um, the duration would have to continue. And mm -hmm. let me reread. This has been a while since weird cast yeah uh, yeah if you want to use the benefit it affects the number of rolls no greater than the potency of the spell so i would get two rolls uh right because you have fate two um and then yeah so it would be for the duration of the spell okay yeah because when the spell goes away those uh rolls would also go away uh no, in that case, I'm probably just going to go with the basic one, just like to let me give me a sign. Right. What's the next step? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, da, da, da. I'm not overreaching. Mm -mm. And Yantra is trying to think. Um, in my head, I'm thinking of like. Um, like a pendulum, like point me in the direction. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. Weird, yeah. weird little dowsing yeah, like, rod. Like yeah. a dowsing rod or a pendulum, which is like very clearly like, yeah, point me somewhere. Sure. I'm never use a willpower because I have so many. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, no penalties or anything. Oh, there. and I have my... um. I can use my informed condition, right? Um. Hmm. Well, no, that would be resolving two things in one scene, and that's yeah, not good. Yeah, that's true. You probably don't okay. want to do that anyways. Um, the other thing to remind you, you could totally use two yantras. Um, you know, there's no, you know, 
if you're <clears throat> casting instant, you can still take that one more turn and use like your pendulum and like your hagstone, you know, stuff like that. Just a kind of general reminder for everybody when you're casting mm-hmm. instant. In this case, I think you'll be fine with uh, seven. Yeah. One cool. Success. There's the one success. Good enough. So yeah, I think coming up here, investigating and tapping on the supernal, and yeah, Just using like, yeah. your little show me, show me a thread, find right. me What's something else I can path? follow from here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think you know, pendulum is swinging, and the pendulum kind of you could swear it just kind of lingers on, you know, instead of drawing back on a swing, just points down to the town, which you're like, yeah, that's very useful. But in your head, it clicks. I see what it's pointing at. It's, it's probably, I probably need to follow Mortimer. And, you know, or I, actually, I think very specifically in, in her head, the clear next step is make herself, uh... oh my gosh. There's a really good five dollar word there that I was looking for, but yeah, make herself useful to Mortimer, uh, indispensable, Invaluable. indispensable. Yeah, okay. Um, and yeah, just make you know, and basically put yourself and you know the, the his contact in town, his guide, something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, that's like okay. If you want to be involved, if you want to find out what's going on, that's the next step. Okay. Join his entourage may be a better way of thinking yeah. of it. But yes. Okay, cool. And with that, I will, I guess, be done here and okay. start trekking back <laughs> it's like to the, my house. Yeah. Which, you know, for, fortunately, cross over, find the big worn path from Enright's house down to down to town. Um, I think somewhere along there, uh, you probably pass or have actually at this point with the moon uh, or the sun completely set, you missed Rilla and then later uh jewels um and to kind of round out the night um because i'm not going to let anybody jump in and ask any more questions because that time for investigation is done uh two folks have already (laughs) gone in and mortimer basically um definitely gets uh a little bit more into his cups uh, as the night passes he's not belligerent or you know anything like that he gets a little bit loud and arrogant um and definitely talking about being part of the royal society and you know starts to get a little yappy about how you know london is the seat of knowledge and he's out here in the frontier bringing that knowledge to you you were all so lucky that you know he's here and madame robert quickly goes "Mm, yes this is going to be a scene and uh kind of trundles him off upstairs into uh into the room um and he's, of course, you know, kind of going on about how he's fine. He's not drunk. Uh, <laughs> some, of, some of those kind of very classic behaviors. Um, but uh, Madame Robert really doesn't care. She's made quite a bit. Um, and actually, um, considering the busyness, uh, uh, Isabel and Theo can both add uh, one dot of resources. Um, it is obviously not sanctity of merits kind of thing. It's just like, here's a little bit of cash or actually um, isn't there, equipment cash. Isn't, isn't cash? Oh, uh, yep. yeah. Yep. Take take one dot of, or yeah, one dot of cash as equipment. And just have some additional spending cash compared to your normal day of uh, of work. Just those tips were kind of flowing and people were buying more drinks because they were hanging around with Mortimer and Mortimer <clears> was drinking. So, you know, the, the whole social thing and it just kind of escalated. Uh, mm-hmm. especially with the miners coming in, um, which, um, you know, eventually the night kind of settles down. Theo, you make your way back out to, uh, the wagon is actually Isabel. Where do you stay? Those upstairs. Okay. That's right. Mm-hmm. Just before mm-hmm. and left for the night, I would have talked to Isabel about the possibility of performing for the miners tomorrow. Okay. Uh, and we can do that in a, Short couple sentences of probably yes or uh, hesitant yes. Yeah, just to give yes. a taste of what else is available at the same besides drink. Gotcha. Do you do this within your shot of Madame Robert? I think no. Okay. Because I don't. It, I don't want it to be about that. It doesn't. So it does align with the thing that I'm trying to accomplish. 
of convincing John Paul to bring the people into town. However, two ladies marching up to the minor camp to put on a show is wildly inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. Admittedly, there's a bit of a difference between going up to the white miners and the black miners camps, which is co-ed, because uh, there are a bunch of women fair. up there and stuff like that. That's fine. Uh, it's, uh, if I remember correctly, you said, uh, Ralph, it's about 50-50. Yeah, at yeah. least. Okay. Yeah. All so, right. so That's yeah, fun. and especially, you know, because he's got this sister that he's all yeah, yeah. about. So, right. Oh, yeah. It's a little less inappropriate, but yeah, it is probably definitely out of the norm. So certainly a little strange, a little weird, one might say. <laughs> uh, so uh, with that, uh, the, the night passes uh, into day. Uh, Isab- uh, Isabel uh, Gisela probably has a little bit of explaining to do with uh, to her mother. Of where were you? It's like the sun has been set, you know, the moon was up, but. Are you feeling better at least? Kind of conversation before bed. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, the sun rises on. Dun, 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 and I can come over here to Conca. I love this. And say. 26th of April. Set as current day, it is the 26th of April. Uh, and the day the Enright Bridge is open, which people have been using it a little bit. And <laughs> it's like. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we had the oceans thirteen cold open versus you know whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, and the, one and day it was open, <laughs> one day it was closed, the next it was open. Right. <laughs> um, and uh, and notably, it is also a Saturday, which um, for the miners doesn't mean anything, but for some of the folks That's in town. For- well, actually, yeah, for everybody, it's, it's the vast it's majority. Just, is, it's still another work day. Yeah, that's true. It's not it's Sunday. It's not Sunday. Right. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but it does. It is Saturday, so it does have the Friday vibe of ah, Sunday we have off, uh, which is one more day, guys. TGIS, Gotta finish up right? Your sentence so you can go get good tomorrow, right? <laughs> uh, TGIS. Uh, I am pleased. Um, and uh, yes, the the sun rises, and uh, you guys have a. Yeah, well, a, a large day ahead of you, especially uh, Theo. You, uh, you're probably pointedly uh, told by Madame Robert that she expects to see you. Uh, you know, obviously not bright and early in the morning because nobody's going to the tavern that early. There's going to be, you know, people down at the bridge, uh, but she expects it, you know, to see you uh, tomorrow. And it's. It's, it's a pointed and expectant suggestion, um, but she does sure. like you. Uh, so there's there's some good faith to it. Um, so Saturday is a special day for, yes, the people of Jewish faith. Yeah, it is uh, Shabbat, but... Um, I don't think we have any in this town. No, um, the, actually we do, but they're not uh, they're not practicing. Um, uh, the barber is, but uh, yeah um yeah for for here it is it is the 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 two churches we have we have a catholic chapel and we have a we have a church uh so yeah sunday is the big one the anglicans yeah uh though i think actually for them it's just it's it there's a catholic and the not catholic church is basically yeah. how it ends up working <laughs> you go to into. church or church yeah <laughs> you, well you go to church or you go to mass i guess yeah uh, but um yeah uh and with that um uh, well, yeah, we got 10 minutes here. Um, what are everybody's plans? Not necessarily aspirations, but that morning they're waking up and what are they heading to do? Because that'll help me inform you know next one. So I Theo's like- going to get up early and start getting the chores out of the way. She was away all last night and she's going to be away again tonight too. So she's going to be making breakfast and making sure all the chores are done around camp before anyone else gets up kind of thing. And- be with Valosia and, and Catherine yeah, yeah. a little bit because she so, knows yeah, and she trying to give off. Catherine like the morning off sort of thing. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, was that Ash? Mm-hmm. Oh, um, I'm basically going to go directly for my ingratiate yourself with Mortimer thing, mm-hmm. and I want to bring them freshly made like baked goods and pastries and bringing them breakfast. Uh, so Ooh, you're gonna take them well, that's cool. Well, imagine when they're down at the um. Once they're down in town preparing for like the oh. guess, ribbon cutting or whatever, mm-hmm. I want to be there with gifts. Yeah, o- almost the high new neighbor kind of vibe yeah. of, yeah, okay, uh-huh. cool. I dig that. 
awesome. and then Ralph and Chris. Um, so one of the reasons that um, the Bell doesn't have any resource dots, mm -hmm. even though she's got like a job and or, like a relatively cheap place to stay and stuff like that, mm -hmm. is she pays to have her horse taken care of. Sure. Like one of her only like possessions oh, yeah. left. Mm -hmm. um, so stable fees and whatnot. Um, which is, I mean, it's a guy down the street that has a, has an extra stable and yeah. has her horse taken care of. Uh, um, quick question: uh, there or at uh, Enright's place? Yeah, up at Enright's place is uh, good. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, because um, he has he has a legitimate stable. Yeah, of course yeah, he yeah. Does. That sounds great. That's yeah, and and. It's a it's a good horse, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and like you know, there's a little bit of that like talking through, and especially with her new life magic, you know, there's the flip side of the coin thing again that she you know she gets along well with animals, right? Mm -hmm. Instinctively almost, mm -hmm. um, and specifically, she bundles up some things from her room um, and takes them and. Um, travels up to Enright's place and um, talks to, I don't know, stable stable boy, mm -hmm. um, whoever, and um, says that uh, she may need to use uh, her horse later. Mm -hmm. um, and she wants to stash some things in the saddlebags uh, or if she needs them later. Cool. All right. We'll find out what those things are later. And then Ralph? <laughs> So the first thing a cloak does every morning is he wakes up as early as he can, as near the sunrise as possible to meditate, mm -hmm. because that's one thing that uh, he, and with the assistance of Sanité and Messi J, um, make sure everybody engages in. Mm -hmm. Like everybody wakes up, they greet the new day, and they try and calm themselves and focus and center themselves for anything that's going to happen. Because, you know, be, and then they all engage in sparring. So those two things are really important to him. And uh, he makes that important to the the cult. That the two things you can do for yourself, regardless of what's going to happen to you, is make sure you have sound mind and sound body. And yeah. so, yeah, we doing that. His plans for the day include. Oh, no, no. Uh, we, we, we just, just that first thing. So I know where you. you oh, OK, are cool. Yeah, yeah. I got you. I know you didn't aspirations, but um, you asked for plans for the day. So yeah. sure. I'll just say that. Yeah. That's it. We'll leave it there. Um, and then uh, one thing to think about, because I'm curious, is do you get everybody up in the morning, including the folks who, you know. Were, oh, yeah. So, so no. yeah. One of those things to, to figure out. It may just be the start yeah, of everybody's they, shift. We we also have a um a policy where people necessarily cycle between the shifts, mm -hmm. or instead of being relegated to like the shit shift for third shift or something like that, people don't have to be there all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Although it might be easier if you get to plan your schedule and you get used to staying up. Mm -hmm. He thinks that people shouldn't be required to work that arduous shift all the time. So we sure. have people cycling through. Yeah, something to think about. Cool. Yep, cool. Um, awesome. So yeah, we're <laughs> we're splitting the party, but it's okay because we don't actually have a party yet. Um, but I like it. And so yes, uh, if if it wasn't clear, tomorrow is going to be a big day. Um, you and mean today? Indeed. Today. Uh, yes. Uh, now that the <laughs> so I get power uh, back. Right? So everybody at home, thank you for joining us. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. It's so fun to have you guys with us. Um, as always, come by Discord, eat into dot space uh, to join the conversation, talk about this episode, other episodes, the Rookery, Star Trek, Blades in the Dark, uh, the Richmond uh, mini series, oh, Drifter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, it's, and, or just birds, birds and, and, and other good boys. Yes. Um, we, you are very, very welcome there. Uh, we're happy to see you. Uh, and it is a okay to come and just lurk. Um, uh, just a heads up that we will be hopefully next week doing an overhaul, a little bit of Discord to try and fix up some of our notifications. That way, if you care about when we go live on Twitch, you get that notification. If you care about YouTube videos, you get that notification. Not necessarily both if you don't care. 
So, yeah. Um, uh, otherwise, uh, if you want to support us monetarily, that's patreon.com slash occultist anonymous, which is dumb. Uh, you can just use <laughs> staylucky.club. Uh, come join us okay. there. And um, yeah, and if you're not already, follow and follow us on Twitch to get notifications when we go live there. I am intermittently, this has been a busy week, um, doing prep on Wednesday nights. So you can come and hang out and see what I'm up to some of which like no you're not going to find out what mortar and Bethune is up to that i handle privately uh but you can see how we prep and it's a good little chance of like how do you mage or how do you run mage i'm, I'm more than happy to chat um and we may have other stuff on twitch in the future um i shout about triatcon but at this point i think it's too late to sign up for anything <laughs> um yeah, uh, I think that's it. So we will catch you guys next time. See you on the flip side. Bye.